Hello and welcome to the Oxford Math live stream. Uh, coming to you today live from the Oxford Open Days. It's been a whirlwind of two days around here, having people visiting from all over the world actually, uh, coming to say uh, some maths in Oxford. Uh, if you've joined us over the last couple of days then I hope you had a good time in Oxford uh, and maybe you've learned about the Matt live stream so maybe you're joining us now for the first time. Uh, although if you're currently at the open day then you're, you're probably on, on your way home at the moment so <laughs> you might not be here. Um, hi to people in chat, I can see people joining at the moment, hi to Alicia and uh, Oscar and I can see an anonymous person joining. If it's your first time here uh, you can join chat anonymously if you want to. One of the reasons we're using our own chat rather than YouTube chat uh, is so that you can join anonymously and so we can easily do polls and stuff. Hi to Michael, um, who I remember meeting the other day as well. Um, also mentioned, uh, met a couple of people today who uh, sometimes in chat they told me their usernames in chats. Uh, you don't have to do that, you can be anonymous if you want to. Uh, but it means that uh, you know that some of the people I've regularly seen are not going to be here today. I'm expecting a little, a little bit smaller than normal perhaps as people are attending open days. Uh, if you haven't attended the open day, you can still catch um, recordings of a virtual open day we did. Uh, we did an online open day earlier in this year, uh, and that's on, on online. I'm just going to minimise some of the many, many things I've got open at the same time. Uh, here we go. Um, okay, um, so the, the idea for this is that, that we do some do some maths together. Um, there is a there is a set list. There's a plan of what we're going to do. I'll, I'll show you uh, what we've what we've got. Just checked that I unmuted myself. I have unmuted myself. That's good. It's been a long day, chat. Um, we've got this uh, rather lovely uh, worksheet, uh, which you can uh, try at home. You see, it comes with uh, these different sections uh, of a bit of math syllabus, uh, some revision material, uh, and then later on, uh, a whole page of revision questions for you to try. They're supposed to be somewhere between uh, uh, revision, somewhere between revision and uh, math questions later on. Although I'll admit that on this particular sheet, uh, I got a, got a bit carried away towards the end, so there's some questions in there that are, are definitely a little bit harder than they should be, but once I'd written them I didn't want to take them off. Uh, then we've got a couple of math questions. Uh, the math questions on these sheets come with these kind of hints, and then later on uh, some extension ideas, uh, and you also have access to, on that website, uh, the revision, revision questions, uh, solutions for those questions. Uh, so anything we don't cover on, on today's stream is also out there. I won't show you too many of the solutions now, also out there on the web uh, for you to get a copy of. Uh, there's a web link on the screen, I know that's not a great form, it's also in the YouTube description uh, and you also can find it uh, over there. If you've completed your GCSEs, there's a question in chat, uh, if you've completed your GCSEs then hey, you could be uh, learning A-level maths, um, mostly aimed at people uh, one year older than you who have already seen some maths, so for you I suppose it's not really revision but uh, also you see extra tough. Urban Rowan have joined chat together on a coach from Oxford, there you go, um, that's lovely. Um, okay. Uh, question about CIE, uh, numerical solution product rule, not on MAT. Uh, the MAT syllabus is really limited. This is the thing that we're working through week by week, uh, the things that are on MAT. Um, yep, so you do not need to know about the product rule for MAT. Uh, you don't need to know volume of revolution or the chain rule or uh, well, say the area between line and curve, I reckon you can work it out. It's going to be okay. Uh, which peer is the MAT based on? We have a syllabus. Um, it's at the top of each, uh, each worksheet, it's got the syllabus. And if you want to get the whole thing, uh, the one page MAT syllabus of just those bits of syllabus, uh, it's available on the MAT website. Right, okay. Um, I'd like to show you something that I saw on the internet. Uh, it's just a funny comment from the from the last video. I mentioned that I'm not a real maths teacher, I have no teaching qualifications, and someone in chat, uh, someone in the comments agreed with me, so uh, that, made, that made me laugh, I, I liked that a lot. Uh, but something else I saw on the internet that's more important is uh, an update to the maths admissions test um, page. Uh, I saw this update because I wrote it. Um, We've now published an update about uh, how the math is going to work in 2023. Um, the long and the short of it is that uh, um, the long and the short of it is that the math is the same, which is the main thing I care about. Um, the format of the test is the same. Um, everything's going to be more or less the same, except you're going to see the questions. Uh, on a computer screen for MAT 2023. Uh, our previous method of getting the questions to people has been to write them on paper, print them out, uh, and post them around the world, and hope that everybody opens the packets at the same time. Uh, this year, for added security, uh, you're going to see the questions on a screen. You are still answering the questions on paper, which means that we can still do graphs and curve sketching, which is the plan for today. We do a lot of curve sketching uh, today. Um, 
So uh, the graphs on screen, and immediately Miles in chat says, scribble on the graphs in the question. True, we are also aware of that as a, as a thing about the, about the question. You no longer can scribble on the questions unless you scribble on the computer screen, which I think is not encouraged. Oh, somebody's got an A star in maths. Hooray. Well done. Congratulations. You get A star in maths. Um, is further maths assessed on the map? Very simple answer is no. Uh, the map has this really limited syllabus. Uh, but we're going to work through it. Um, uh, week by week, uh, and today I'm talking about the stuff that we have on curve sketching and on transformations, which is a very limited amount of material. The idea of the map is to test depth of understanding rather than breadth of, of knowledge. Uh, somebody completed GCSEs? Ah, brilliant, okay. Uh, when I say A levels for one year older, I'm of course referring to the, the more modal trans transformation of people through GCSEs and A levels. If you're doing things at a different speed, then I think you already know that. References to which year you're in maybe don't apply to you. Um, is this suitable for A-level math students? Yes. Oh, that are starting sixth form next year. Yeah, uh, sure. Um, so it seems we've got a few people here today who haven't learned A-level math yet. Um, have a go. See what you understand and see what you're going to learn next year. There we go. Um, is it based on both AS? And we're getting closer. So the math is based on AS level maths um, with a little bit of A level maths. Um, I will draw attention to it when we get to it. I think everything we're doing today is in AS level maths. Um, we will see. Okay. Um, I should say my advice on the screen here is for maths 2023. Um, questions on the computer screen, writing on paper. That's also what's happening for the PAT, the physics test. Um, most of the other Oxford tests are going to be online only. Um, in the future, if you're watching this video in the future, who knows what kind of hologram technology is now being used in the year 2050. Um, if you're watching this in the distant future, uh, then please check the uh, Matt website, I suppose, if websites are still a thing, um, to find out what technology we're using in the future. But for people in 2023, no holograms, I'm afraid. Uh, just questions on the screen or writing on paper. Uh, the answer sheet that you write in is, is not going to have scribbly diagrams for for, for drawing on, uh, that I think is no longer a thing that we are doing in math. Some of these past questions that we're looking at today are back in the question whether the graph was printed and we asked you to draw on that copy. Um, we've phased out that sort of interaction uh, mostly over the, over the last few years anyway. Right, okay. Um, good, okay, so we've got Sana, we've got some uh, people getting ready for maths. Uh, question about registration. Uh, question about registration and how thoroughly, Elsa's asked the, uh, the big question of how thoroughly do we have to do um, uh, graph sketching. Um, in general, if you've got roughly the right shape, there's some features that we might be looking for. Um, a graph sketching question might ask you to draw in turning points or where the curve turns around, um, and it might ask you to focus on where things cross the axis. Those are usually good starting points. Um, uh, in general, the rough, rough feeling of what the graph is like, which is why it's sketch, not accurately plot. Um, okay, uh, the, the map, very true, it's not a calculator based test. Um, uh, there's questions about loves and oh, something on the something has not been typeset correctly. Sorry, Miles. Yeah, there should be a text box around that. I must have deleted the text. Cool. Ignore any Q quads that you encounter in the website. I wonder if it does that on the sheet as well. Uh, yeah, I think I know which question that is. Uh, Miles, can you let me know if that's PDF or on the web version? Or both. Thanks, Miles. Um, somebody's 14, hasn't done GCSEs, looking forward to being perplexed. That's great. Can I highlight that? Highlight that? Okay. Should go to the top. There we go. 14, doing GCSEs, haven't done GCSEs, looking forward to being perplexed. There we go. Cool. Um, <laughs> cool. Somebody else said oh, Imperial. I think you've got to ask Imperial if you want to know about Imperial. I think. Right. Okay. They use their mat in a slightly different way. Right. Good. Okay. Um, so. Uh, registration details as well, somebody asked for. I did see that. Um, at the moment, schools or colleges can register to be test centres where the map will happen. Um, that's something that they can now do, um, registering via this university website. Uh, there's a portal there for them to register. Um, during September, they will register you to take the test. Um, so 1st of September to the 29th of September is the window for them to register. Um, okay, good. And people are now talking to you. Each other. Miles, it was, Miles says the web version. Thanks, Miles. I will fix the web version. People watching the replay of this won't even know what we were talking about because the web version will be sparklingly correct. The cue chords are supposed to be invisible space. Uh, they've become, well, spacing, but very visible spacing. So, <laughs> not my intention. Let's look at the PDF. Let's have a go. Okay, I'm going to cut there and I'm going to press that button as well. 
so I know this one doesn't have a, doesn't have chat on the screen. I can still see chat. Um, you can't see the chat unless you're looking at chat. Uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, so actually, I'm going to respond to chat a little bit quickly while we while we go through the syllabus. Oh, somebody's missed the open day because they're on a summer school. Summer schools are fun. Uh, you haven't missed that much that you can't find on our website. Um, and question seven was discontinued uh, because the computer scientists decided that they wanted CS candidates to do question three instead. Um, broadly speaking, they decided that. Uh, um, because everybody's interested in the kind of uh, machine learning and the maths that you need for me machine learning these days, um, they'd be appropriate to use more of the math questions. Uh, I suppose that's a, a trend in uh, the way people are doing... Yeah, let's not read too much into it. Um, they decided that it was good to use question three. Ooh, sorry for the door start, slam there. Um, developing mathematical insight and problems. Fluency, I think getting stuck on problems and getting unstuck on problems. Fluency involves practicing lots. Um, Best way to understand what you intuitively and confidently. Um, I, I think there's not just practice there, there's also reflection. So the, the depth of your own practice, if you do a problem, I'm hoping we see some on the screen in a little bit here. Uh, if you do a problem, then to uh, reflect on what you've done so that next time if you see a similar problem uh, that you've learned from your experience, it's, it's very easy to sort of move on to the next one and you know, next one, next one, next one, and, and just drop them and uh, don't look back at what you did. Uh, but looking backwards is sometimes good. If you reread your own work to see in some sense, you get to remember what it was like to not be able to do the question. Now you can do the question and you can see. Guide yourself through the question. Um, will the other questions be more computer science-y because Q7 has gone? Obviously, I can't comment on what the questions are, um, but uh, there's, I think, no intention to uh, change how the other questions work. Uh, if we wanted this more computer science-y approach, uh, we would uh, keep question seven, I think, and keep that being the computer science-y one. Okay, right, good. That's uh, enough about question seven, I think. Uh, uh, computer science candidates are now doing question three. Good. Okay. Right, so, math syllabus. Let's have a look at this together. Uh, uh, I've got a paper copy as well. So if you see me looking sideways, it's because I'm looking at my paper copy. It is due to my incredible computer setup. It's easier for me to look at the paper. Um, graphs of quadratics, that means degree two polynomials, and cubics, that means degree three. Um, we would like you to be able to draw the graphs of sine and cos and tan, trigonometric functions. We'd like you to know what they look like. Um, square root of x and, and a to the x. Um, I suppose other powers of x might be interesting to, to think about there as well. I um, expect you to maybe, uh, uh, as well as square root of x, be able to combine that together with what you know about polynomials to draw gra other, other graphs. Um, powers, uh, exponential graphs like a to the x uh, and logarithms. Uh, I've got some examples of what those look like in a second. Um, so solving equations and inequalities, you should know that when two graphs have the same value, that's when the lines go through each other. Um, inequalities, you should be able to talk about whether something is bigger than uh, uh, or smaller than something else and what that would look like for the graphs. Um, there are some transformations on there, which we're going to talk about in more detail later on, but there's, there's only really a few transformations that I expect you to be able to apply. Uh, maybe a sequence of these transformations, one after the other, but uh, really Nothing too weird about what's going on. Uh, e to the x is included in the a to the x category. Uh, so e to the x, I expect you to be able to draw that uh, for positive uh, a that's either bigger than 1 or less than 1, or might be the particular number e, which is about 2.7, but otherwise, for the purposes of sketching it, not that, not that different. Hi, Flynn. How are you doing in chat? Uh, sorry, people just joining chat still. Uh, good to see you. Good. Uh, OK. I think it's probably a good idea to look at some revision notes. I've realised I haven't done a poll for how was your day. I've had quite a good day, so I should probably do the poll. Probably do the poll. Let's stick the poll on the side. Can I do that? Oh, that's sort of working. That's sort of a little bit working. I, I always like to know how your day is going. Oh, straight away with the two-star vote and the four-star vote simultaneously. Interesting. Um, always five-star day when I get to meet people for the for the open days. Um, so these transformations that we've got over here, uh, there's some something interesting going on about the way... Uh, as written, they've got some plus signs in them. Uh, some of that means what you might expect a plus sign to mean. Some of it, frustratingly, doesn't line up with your intuition about uh, whether it's a plus sign or a minus sign. Um, cool. OK, we've got quite a few votes on the poll. Ah, oh, more people are voting one star day. Um, I hope there's nothing terrible going on in uh, people's lives at the moment. But if there is, then there may be some curve sketching is what you're, what you're looking for, what you're missing. OK. Um, I'm going to leave that poll going and talk about revision. I can see they're overlapping a little bit. 
Maybe it's time to turn the pole off. Ah, let's give it a second. Look, I can just put this here. Oh no, I'm covering it up. Ah! <laughs> Hang on. No, that didn't work how I thought it would work. Right, cool, but the poll's going in a second. Uh, vote now, three point, what is the 3.9 on average? That's an okay day on average. Of course, you are more than the average of your parts. I'm always looking at that distribution and thinking, ah, some people are really not having a good day. And we've got up to four now. And five stars of stand-up team modal, which is nice. Cool, okay. Um, if you're having a great day, let's keep going with that. Uh, it was supposed to be affirmation, but then I paused awkwardly to turn off the Slido chat. Um, right, okay, revision notes. Um, drawing the graph of a function is actually a special case of something slightly more general. Um, you're sort of drawing, showing me all of the points x, y that satisfy uh, an equation y equals f of x. Um, you can actually play games with this. You can do other sorts of equation. Um, so I could show you an equation like x plus y equals 3. Um, and that, that's an equation with some solutions. And I could ask you where are the points x, y that satisfy x plus y equals 3. Now, okay, you can, for that one, x plus y equals 3, you can rearrange it um, into the form y equals f of x. But even if you can't, I hope you agree the question makes sense. That there might be some points x, y that satisfy uh, the, the equation. That's right. I just gesticulated uh, with my hands so much that I hit my step goal for the day. So that, that's nice. Um, here are some examples. So if the equation is a quadratic on the right hand side for x, um, y equals uh, quadratic, uh, then it might, be a, it might be a happy quadratic or what I've been calling a, a sad quadratic, um, smiling upwards or, or downwards. Um, I think we've talked about polynomials and how it's, it's a that matters. Um, in that expression, ax squared plus bx plus c, um, really it's a that matters for whether the quadratic is happy or sad. Uh, and b and c play this other role as well, um, but the overall emotion of the graph, uh, whether it looks like a valley or a hill, is, is something to do with a, whether it's positive or negative. Um, for cubics, it's more complicated. Uh, cubics are polynomials of degree 3, uh, and their graphs um, can have well uh, several different shapes. I, I've shown some of them on the screen here, um, I've tried to show a variety. Uh, we had a very good question a few weeks ago about whether a polynomial always has n minus 1 uh, turning points where n is the degree. Uh, do, in particular, do cubics always have two turning points? Um, and the answer is no, they don't. That's the most turning points they can have, but they don't have to have that many turning points. Um, so that's sort of an interesting distinction, perhaps, that cubics have got a lot of variety to them. Um, on the right there, I've got a cubic with two turning points, which is maybe the first one you think of. I suppose unless the first one you think of is x cubed, which is a very famous cubic, it's a very simple cubic, uh, y equals x cubed, it's only got one, well, is that a turning point? It's got one stationary point. Um, yeah, I suppose, I, I suppose I've used the wrong phrase there on, on, the, on the screen. That's not really one turning point, is it? Because it's not turning around, it's one stationary point. I think I'm going to change my notes after this. If you're watching the live stream, then it, the PDF is currently saying something slightly confusing. Who knows? Maybe I'll change. Can I have a polynomial with no stationary points? Yes, I think that uh, is it possible to. Ben asks in chat, is it possible to have a polynomial with no stationary points? And I think the answer is yes. Um, let me try and find one. I'm, I'm going to go split screen, uh, so I need to move that a little bit. Uh, that, that thing I've drawn on the left is supposed to be an example of such a polynomial. Um, and I'm trying to uh, try and prove something. Uh, Let's try something like um, this. Um, so if I have my polynomial like this, I think I've chosen the coefficients so that dy by dx is equal to 3x squared plus 1. And then this has got no solutions to um, a stationary point would have derivative 0. Um, real, no real solutions. Chat, I, I know chat, people in chat love complex numbers and they want to bring complex numbers in it. No complex numbers today, please. Um, so, uh, there's no real solutions, there are no turning points. Uh, and somebody else in chat has just asked um, why. Uh, in general, what you can do with a cubic is you can differentiate. Um, I suppose, oh, uh, people doing their GCSEs at the moment, people are about to start sixth form. Uh, when you do sixth form, you learn 
how to differentiate, which means how you write down the gradient, um, how, what the slope is. Uh, so you see the one on the right, the slope is uh, positive gradient and then negative gradient and then positive gradient. It's this kind of uh, difference about what different places, different gradients. Um, in the, on the left, though, we've got a cubic which is only positive gradient. Um, and that's because when you differentiate, you get a quadratic. People who are doing A-level know this. You reduce the power by 1 when you differentiate. Um, for GCSE people, there's this relationship here uh, to explain what the derivative is. You get a quadratic, and you know that quadratics might have some real solutions, or they might not. So your condition there for the, the question in chat, um, when does, why do the number of uh, why do the, why do the number of turning points vary for a cubic um, has been answered now by actually someone else anonymous, which I'm going to quickly put this on screen to give them credit. Uh, anonymous person at the top there says, "Can you use the discriminant?" Yes, you can. Um, you can use the discriminant to decide how many roots that quadratic has got. So let's do the general case then. Um, why not? Uh, we've got a cubic at the top there, uh, starting with a. I I'm going to differentiate it. And if you've never seen calculus before, then uh, we did a live stream a couple of weeks ago, possibly last week, about calculus. Um, so you could have a look at that. Uh, but kind of the way you differentiate it looks a little bit like this um, for the general uh, case at the top there. Um, and then you might like to talk about the discriminant of this polynomial, being careful with the 3 and the 2. Um, so you can maybe write stuff like if 4b squared take away 3. Breathe. It's been a long day. <laughs> 4. If this is positive, then we're going to get two turning points. There are two solutions to this, we're going to get two turning points. That is terrible handwriting. Luckily, I said it out loud as well. Um, cool. Uh, somebody says in chat that they've already uh, been, uh, that they've uh, done GCSEs, additional maths, uh, lots of AS level maths. Brilliant. Cool. How similar is it to AS level maths symbols? Well, there's an easy way to check, which is to look at the syllabus for that, which was on screen a moment ago. Well, some of it was on screen, and the rest of it is on the website. Um, and just tick off topics and see if you've seen them. Uh, yes, how do I draw that graph? Um, Ikra in chat has asked how I would draw that graph. I wonder if they mean the top one with ABCs in it. Ah, complicated. Loads of cases. Or maybe they mean this one on the left. Uh, the one on the left, you have to draw something with a kind of a uh, gentle slope in the middle that gets faster over here and even faster over here. It's from a cubic that's always increasing. Uh, and somebody else, I've uh, done GCSE further maths. Sounds fun. Um, I think it overlaps a little bit with A-level content. So if you, it might be a good way to get started. Um, at some point you're going to learn lots more stuff as well. Oh, the one on the left. Aha! Because of chat delay, <laughs> you've specified which curve you want me to sketch just after I've sketched it. The, the time delay means that I answered your question before you. Ah, good. <laughs> okay, back to the back to the syllabus. I think, if that's okay, um, we've done some done some catch catching. Something I love about the live stream is that we can. Uh, we're not getting distracted so much as we're doing the right thing, right? We're doing the thing that you want you want to see. Um, if you're watching live, uh, you can join Slido chat uh, and get involved uh, to uh, side track us and do what we want to do. Is there a list of rules or formulae uh, that would be good ideas to learn with math, says somebody in chat. Uh, yeah, the, the syllabus is a good starting point, I think. Uh, and then the revision notes that we're putting together is good too. Um, you might also be interested in a set of flashcards that we've made. Uh, good excuse. Oh, I'm so glad I got the camera working. Um, a set of flashcards we've made that are available on the map website. Um, people at the open, you haven't seen these yet. Ah, we've got flashcards. Um, the way these work is you see uh, one side of the card has got something that you're supposed to recognize, uh, and then the back of the card says, ah, you spot what it is. It was a circle with center AB and radius R. The idea of flashcards is you work through them and you try and imagine. This is definitely the worst card. Uh, it's got so much on the back, that's the binomial theorem. Uh, but some of them are sort of geometric critical diagrams that you see this situation with a radius and a tangent, and you think, right angle. There we go, good. I see this one, you think cosine rule. Okay, uh, if you'd like these flashcards, uh, you can download them for free. Uh, I suppose not with a card. These ones have been glued to 40 copies of my business card. Uh, but if you want copies of uh, copies of those cards, you can get those on the Matt website. If you follow the Matt Live link just there and then go up a page somehow to the Matt page, and then down a page to the flashcards, you can get a copy. Uh, that's a good source of uh, form rules and formulae. Good, right, okay. Um, Sine and cosine and tan, if you've learned about those uh, before in school, uh, then you could uh, draw graphs of those, I suppose. Um, a little bit of reminder that um, 
a little bit of a reminder that uh, Matt is using degrees. You don't have to use degrees. I have to use degrees when I'm writing questions. Um, but you, you're free to use whatever you want to use to measure angles. Um, are explanations of the syllabus or something? I'm sorry, explanations of the syllabus is what we're doing now. Um, I'm going through uh, trying to show you graphs of the things that we're supposed to know about. Um, for example, here's square root of x and what a to the x looks like. Uh, a to x kind of has two different cases. If a is bigger than one or a is less than one, uh, the graph looks a little bit different. And some kind person, oh, thank you so much, ha heard me say, go to this website, go up one, go down one, and thank you so much, has put a link in uh, Slido chat. That's very helpful. Good. Um, okay, I've got some graphs. Uh, exponentials. I called this middle one an exponential, uh, which maybe is a bit sloppy, but uh, I'm going up and, up and down. Uh, Harriet in chat asks, will Matt always be only in degrees? And this is a complicated question about the future, Harriet. Um, you're asking me to comment on when Matt's on holograms and stuff. Uh, but our plan at the moment is for Matt to be in degrees. Uh, unless there's a change to how A-level is structured, then if A-level changes, then we will have a think about whether we can ask the question in, in radians. Personally, I found it's, it's fine to set questions in degrees. Question in chat, has anybody ever used gradients? If you've ever used gradients, let us know in chat. Gradients, they're a little bit like degrees, but there's 400, because that's a nice round number. I think there's something to do with the French Republic. If you're French, let us know in chat whether you've ever used gradients. Um, here's a graph of logarithms. I love logarithms. Really like a logarithm. Have we got an episode on logarithms? Yes, we do. Next week, all about logarithms, non-stop, for two hours. Brilliant. So let's not talk about logarithms too much now. But hey, haven't they got a nice graph? Uh, it <laughs> goes up. Uh, the rate that it's increasing at slows. Uh, it gets flatter as you go further to the right. Um, but it, which is a sort of steady, gentle behaviour over there. Um, but uh, down on the left, near zero, it goes to minus infinity um, really sharply, uh, really quickly. Uh, I personally sometimes refer to that as the, the log spike, uh, because it spikes down in a really spiky way. Um, you will not be punished for using radians. I can't be clear enough, I think, here that I have to use degrees when I'm writing the questions. You can do whatever you like. Um, because I can't assume that you know radians. I don't know if you've been taught radians or not. But you can assume that I know radians. <laughs> so, because <laughs> I do. Um, you can use the radians if you want to. It's fine. The chat is quite excited by this idea, I think. Um, so chat, you can use radians if you want to. They're kind of equivalent. The people marking the map know about radians as well. Um, if it's multiple choice, then you're selecting A, B, C, D, or E. So it doesn't really matter if you used radians or not along the way. Good, okay. Chat seems really quite excited about the idea of using radians. So, good news. I hope that's good news. Uh, somebody's in France. They say, no gradients. Uh, Basil says, ah, can we use FM ideas if it's quicker? Which I just want to put on uh, slides quickly. Um, I think this is not an example of being quicker. I think this is just a difference in how you like to do angles. I just lost the internet very briefly, but then got it back again. So who knows? OK. Um, translations. And I want to show you some examples of these in the warm-up questions, which we're going to get to in a couple of minutes. There are four to know about, really. Um, stretches and translations. Now, I find the translations easier to think about. Um, I realize now, have I got a piece of minus signs? It's been a very long day and I'm scared about plus and minus signs. I think I'm good. Um, so here are some. The translations are harder to remember, really. And there's that minus sign at the top. Um, if that doesn't make sense to you, maybe because you learned it in school and you just learned it by rote and you never really thought about it, or maybe you're seeing it for the first time, but the way you shift a graph along, um, sine of x minus 3, that's a weird thing to do, but OK, off you go. Uh, now the zeros start at 3, because if you plug in 3, it does sine of 3 minus 3. 3 minus 3 is 0, so sine of 0 is 0. Um, so you get a 0 on your graph at x equals 3. So it's moved the things to the right by 3, by doing sine of x minus 3. Again, a bit of a strange thing to do, but uh, that's how you would translate sine along a bit, to draw a picture of sine over there. Um, if you use this idea in Desmos and you animate it in Desmos, you get a kind of travelling wave if you animate it. Um, and the wave goes to the right as you make minus a 
with a bigger number, with a minus sign. So it's something to remember. If you want the wave to go to the right, you need to do x minus a, and then increase a. Gosh, OK. Uh, questions in chat. Are there answers to the math syllabus practice? Yes. If you found the math syllabus practice, the answers to that should be in a roughly the same place that you found the questions. Um, I wrote both of those at the same time, and I thought I put them in very similar places. So if you can't find them, send me an email, because it probably means they've been deleted from the internet while I, while I wasn't looking. Um, if you can find the answers to the math syllabus practice, somebody else, uh, then let us know. Um, why does that happen? Ah, so it's to do with f taking on the values. Um, I think the stretches are easier to make sense of, especially the things to do with um, in the y direction. They, they make sense. Um, it's, let's talk about that translation a little bit more. Uh, and then we will get on to some practice questions underneath. So that translation at the top of the screen there, uh, I'm going to try and draw a picture to, to explain what's going on. Um, let's say you've got your function f of x. I'm going to do this one more time. This is y equals f of x. Um, and it's got certain features. It's got certain values. Um, the graph is showing me here that f of 0 equals 0. Uh, and it's also showing me that maybe this is 2 or something. f of 2 is equal to 0. And then my graph is boring. Otherwise, it's going out here like this. Here, if I sketch instead y equals f of x minus 2. Uh, now I'm getting a more interesting number, 3. Not that much more interesting. Um, here's, here's what's going on. Um, the values here, um, perhaps an easier way to think about it is, I could think about what's going on when x is 0. Uh, so x is 0 means you read up here and you say f of 0 minus 3. Well, that's negative 3. And f of minus 3, well, I can look that up in the left graph. And on the left graph, oh my goodness, minus 3 is somewhere over here. There's one somewhere down here. So I put a point over here because I put in x equals 0. Now into my new function, I've got f of minus 3. Uh, and then I looked up f of minus 3 and it was over here. Um, and then I keep doing that. So I plug in 1 and I get a point down here. Uh, I plug in 2 and I get a point up here. I plug in 3 and I get 0. I get 0 because when I plug in x is 3, I get f of 0, and f of 0 is 0. Um, and what ends up happening is that you end up getting a picture like this with everything shifted to the right by 3, even though there's a minus sign, and it says x, so you'd expect x plus 3, like, like computer code, right? x plus plus 3, but no, it's shifted, it shifted to the right. Um, so you can kind of piece out, think about the values, piece, piece it together thinking about the values of the function. Just peace out. Just think about the function. Um, but uh, uh, there is some sort of logic behind this. Um, somebody's asked about reflections, and reflections are included. Um, uh, so reflections are included in this stretching thing. Stretching by a negative number is a, is a reflection. So f of minus x is a, I would maybe call that a stretch. Um, but uh, it's, it's an example of a reflection. Uh, maybe you think that my definition is a bit of a stretch, but I'm Tish. Uh, L has posted in chat a very helpful link to the solutions to this week's problems. Um, I think they're also asking about the uh, math syllabus things. Uh, the math syllabus problems I wrote a few years ago, they've evolved into this. Um, so, there we go. Question in chat. And it's a hard question. Um, I'm going to put it on the screen. So thank you for personally suggesting this question. What does f of a minus x look like uh, compared to f of x? Um, and it's tricky. Uh, this is a combination of things. One thing has happened and then another thing. Um, this has been maybe uh, translated and then uh, maybe also flipped. Or maybe it's been flipped and then translated. Those are similar things, but slightly different. Um, I would approach this algebraically. You always have these two ways to think about it uh, in terms of graphically, the picture of what's going on, or algebraically. Um, so I would maybe try this algebraically. Um, so let's try a really easy function. Let's try uh, uh, Let's just see what happens with this nice easy straight line function uh, after we do f of a of x. Well, my f is now very, very easy, so this now becomes f of a minus x. Uh, f of a minus x is just a minus x, so this. I realise now that a straight line might not have been the best choice because the straight line's already got lots of symmetries. Like, I won't notice particular translations are crossing up, I won't see. Um, but this looks like 
uh, to make some sort of reflection, a reflection in the line a over two. Now it's not evidence; it's just not a proof yet. But uh, in fact, that's the right answer. And it's a reflection in the line x equals a over two. That one's a bit complicated. Um, I want to stress that somebody in chat asked that, not me. If you think the question is too hard, I blame chat. <laughs> Sorry, chat. I think I'm quite mean. Um, okay, let's look at some questions, and then you can tell me if my question is too hard. Um, the way this works is uh, we have, uh, gosh, a choice, uh, because we have uh, 15 uh, questions that have been put together for revision. Uh, and revision goes a long way here. Uh, we're going a bit beyond uh, revision and curve sketching into other things as well. I'd like to give some of these a go. Um, I would especially like to try the last few, because I think they're the hardest. Um, if there are other ones that you would like to see, we're probably going to do those last three, for example, or maybe the last five new ones for this year. Um, if there's ones from the first 10 that you're particularly interested in, maybe you downloaded this question sheet in advance, or maybe you've just seen them on screen uh, scrolling past. Um, if there's particular ones you'd like to see, let me know in chat. Um, otherwise, I'm going to pick my favourites. Um, who knows, maybe that's good news or bad news. Um, in chat, Matt has got an idea about doing or uh, using matrices and doing reflections. I think this is an example of further maths, uh, making some, making letting you think about something in a different way. It's one of the reasons that complicated reflections are just really hard to think about until you learn matrix theory when you get some new technology to talk about them. It's one of the reasons that I'm not personally super excited about doing math questions about combinations of hard transformations because. I uh, worry that they just turn into matrix questions for people who don't know matrices. So I don't feel like uh, perfect. perfect. Uh, so we've got requests coming into chat for questions 2, 5, 7, uh, 15 is very much on my list of ones I want to do because I think it's really hard. Um, first two questions will be proof exhaustive sets. Oh, Harriet's got an extension question. Uh, very quickly, I'll put it on the screen so everyone can see. Um, Harriet's extension question is how could you get an exhaustive set of functions? And note that my questions one and two have been written, give an example. Harriet, if the question's too hard, blame chat. <laughs> Thank you, Harriet, for the question. Um, an exhaustive set of solutions. Uh, I think that's really hard. Uh, requests of five and six. Uh, yep, okay, okay. So it's all looking at the middle, kind of five, six, six, five, six, seven. Scroll down a little bit. Ah, oh, we've got curve sketching involving x squared. Yeah, I think those are five, six, seven are all on a theme, uh, and they are tough. Uh, we got requests for 11 and 12, which I, I, I do like. To be honest, I like all of them. Um, it's an odd numbered year, um, so I wrote some new questions for this. Um, I also got some from ChatGPT, but none of these ones from ChatGPT. Um, ChatGPT was not very good at these, uh, so I've written my own ones. Odd numbered years, I wrote new questions, you get some new questions, which means I'm excited to talk about all of the new questions, but I've got to, got to talk about this. So for, in Harriet's question, an exhaustive set of solutions would mean find all of them. The, the one on the board says, give an example. Harriet says, find all of them. That's much harder, right? Because not just one, find all of them. Um, request for six and uh, maybe four as well. Okay, so looking in time, so we've almost got to all of the questions. I'm gonna pause there, I think. Um, it might be the case that we've got time to do other stuff, uh, but my list now looks like two, four, five. Harriet wanted one, six, seven, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. <laughs> okay, right, gosh. Um, uh, yeah, more requests for six. It feels like a lot of requests for six. Um, we're going to go roughly in order, I think. So, one and two, not very many requests, uh, but uh, they're talking about those transformations and how the order that you apply transformations matters. And in some sense, I'm being a little bit cheeky by calling it order because some of those are just different. Uh, they're scaling with different numbers. Um, for an example at the end there, I would use the simplest thing I can think of. Um, so I would try simple functions until I found something that works. Um, I'll give you two examples uh, to, to show that there's something going on. Um, I would try g of x equals uh, x, because that's nice and straightforward. Um, in which case, uh, the first one is 5 times and then g says just do 4 of x. And the second one says four times and so geez, let's just do 5x there, write down the thing inside the brackets. Um, but I'll give you another example for free, uh, which is uh, g of x equals just the zero function. Um, I'm not sure if you've met the zero function. You might not have a name for it, um, even if you've met it. Uh, the zero function is one of my favorites. Um, the zero function takes your input, ignores it, and says zero. Computer says no. 
Um, whatever your input, it says zero. Uh, it, it's just a good function for cases like this because you see, um, it says uh, on the left there, five G four of X. Well, my G now just says zero, which, okay, fine. And on the right, four times more zero. Uh, so the zero function is sometimes a helpful thing to think about uh, in examples like this where you need a, need a, a choice. Uh, there's a suggestion in chat that I do a poll. Uh, so maybe for next week I'll set up a poll for voting on which questions we want to do. This is a very good idea. Slido does have polls. That's immediately got a thumbs up from somebody else, which is a form of voting. We could do that as well. Let's not do that. Um, okay. Uh, this is a sign that Harriet's onto something. Your solution, whatever it was, your solution is not unique for that last one. Not unique would be if there's just one solution. Here are two. They're definitely different functions. I love the zero function. It's just so rude. I don't care about your input. I'm saying zero. Uh, good. Uh, okay, okay. I'm going to not answer Harriet's question, I think. I'm going to leave it as an extension. Sorry, Harriet. Uh, question two, uh, similar ideas. Uh, I would take G to be something really simple. Um, here, the zero function sadly doesn't work. Uh, so next I checked the one function. Uh, the constant one function also doesn't work, but I felt like I was getting a bit closer. Um, and so I tried a linear function. I tried to choose the coefficients to work out. Um, that's how I approached that last part. Okay, right. I think we had a request for four, five, six, seven. So let's have a look down there. Um, four is uh, a sort of example of a transformation question that you can approach in a couple of different ways. Um, so question four, when you see four X plus one, there are sort of two ways to think about that. Um, one is to think about multiplication and then addition, which kind of two translations. Uh, that's perhaps a little bit tricky because they're both transformations that are having inside the brackets. Um, and in fact, you kind of need to build them the other way around. It's the tricky thing. So when you do the transformation, you're replacing the x with something else. So uh, perhaps common misconception is that the 4x is the first transformation I should do. Um, let's see what happens if I, I have, so maybe an operation here is to replace x with 4x. And maybe uh, that's, uh, that's uh, one of the stretches. And I have another op option to replace x with x plus 1. Now it feels like if we do those in order we should get 4x plus 1, um, but unfortunately, because I'm imagining starting with like the graph of square root x and doing these transformations, but unfortunately if you follow these instructions in this order, uh, what happens is you get, uh, replace the x with 4x, you get root 4x, and then replace the x with x plus 1, you get 4x plus 1. Uh oh, that's root 4x plus 4. So you see how intuitively it feels to me like you should do the 4x and then the plus 1, because that's how you calculate 4x plus 1. But in fact, what you need to do to reach the result of 4x plus 1 is you need to do these operations in the other order. Um, you need to do first, replace the x with x plus 1 to get root x plus 1, and then replace x with 4x. And it's maybe worth thinking about these transformations as kind of operations. I'm putting boxes around my operations here um, to show what happens when you're doing that switch. Um, so the upshot of this is that um, it's not this combination that we're doing. It's this combination. It's a translation and then a stretch. That's perhaps um, hard to think about. That's the opposite way to how calculation works. It's outside in rather than inside out. Um, that's one way to think about it. A combination of transformations. The other way is to pull out the factor of 4, uh, use some square root theory to bring out the factor of 4, to write it like that, and now one of the transformations is just obviously last. You should multiply by 2 at the end. Um, uh, the ones that are scaling in the y direction, the operation there is to uh, multiply by 2 or to add 2 afterwards. So uh, the box would say something like add to on the end or something. Uh, and that one does behave in a way that maybe you expect it to behave. Um, I think that secretly this is the same minus sign. Um, it feels like it's slightly backwards, right? And I think it's the same minus sign as the other one. Uh, something about order of operations. Is there an intuitive way? Uh, the question was there and it went. There's something question about intuitive ways to do this, but hey, I'm not sure. How do we know which order to do transformations in? It says L in chat. And to be honest with you, I have to think about it really hard each time, uh, whether I'm going to do replace with 4x and then replace with x plus 1. Is that going to give me the thing I want? In this case, 
Uh, oh no. Um, so really probably my thought process is, is it this way around? Quickly check it. Oh no, it's the other way around. Check this. Hooray. Um, it works out. So is there a way to do it? I don't know, maybe you've got intuition and you can get it right first time. I can get it right second time. Um, okay, that's, that's question four, I think. Oh, so do the sketch, do the sketch. Um, so I like to think of this in terms of uh, this one over here as a, a translation to the left and then a stretch upwards. Like that. Oh, just off the bottom of the screen there. There you go. Uh, okay, which is also what you get if you uh, do the translation left quite a bit and then squash it down. <laughs> so these do, think, do end up being the same thing. Um, you can either translate and then squash or you can stretch, oh my goodness, <laughs> stretch and translate. It's been a long day. Do you always do X transformations then Y transformations? Uh, I mean it's up to you. I think you can do them separately. I think they commute. Oh gosh. I think you can change the order of operations between X and Y transformations. There's a map question in here somewhere. Oh, it's getting very complicated. See how combining transformations together is really complicated? Tricky stuff. Cool, okay, that's four. Um, I wanna do five, six, seven kind of together. I wrote them together, so. <laughs> and put them in this order for some reason. Let's do seven first. Um, so whenever you see something like a square root of an X squares, um, square root should ring alarm bells in your head of like, am I doing the square root of a positive thing? Uh, in this case, you definitely are doing the square root of a positive thing, it's x squared. Um, so this exists for uh, any sort of value of, value of x, this is gonna be okay. Um, I still wanna think about it carefully in cases because I know that square root of x squared is always positive. It's the, uh, or zero. For the pedantic people in chat, I'm one of you as well. It's a positive or zero. Um, so it's quite tempting to just write uh, uh, that it's equal to x, right? Because we squared it and then we half powered it and two times one half is one, so it's x to the one, right? Um, but it can't be this because this is negative sometimes. And in fact, this is sometimes the positive root and it's sometimes the negative root. So we need to be a little bit careful. Um, it's this, um, if x is positive, because if x is positive, um, we get a positive number, we square it, we get a positive number, we take the positive square root, that's x. Not minus x, but x. Um, it's actually equal to minus x if x is negative. Um, if x is negative, then what happens if you take that negative number, you square it, for example, you take minus three, you square it, you get nine, and then when you do the square root, the square root of nine is three, which is not minus three. Um, so the graph looks like this. Um, x for x positive, minus x for x negative, and you end up with this kind of V-shaped function. It comes down and then straight up again. It is the graph of mod x. If you know about mod, uh, which is defined to be uh, x if x is positive uh, or zero, and minus x if x is negative. Sometimes written with these absolute value signs. Um, it's the distance between x and the origin. Uh, so using those distance things, like in geometry, that's the distance between x and the origin. Uh, it is the distance between x and, and zero. If you're using like one-dimensional vectors, but nobody uses one-dimensional vectors. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, cool. Uh, I tricked you into getting to draw the absolute value of x. Uh, some computer programs uh, would implement this as apps for the absolute value. Uh, it's a good word because it's uh, absolute's got lots of other meanings, so you can use this in math memes. Uh, I see this as an absolute value. Uh, right, good. Don't do memes out loud. That was very cringe. Right, uh, let's do other things involving x squared. Um, for example, sine of x squared. Now, you know what sine looks like, and you know what x squared looks like. Uh, the graph of function of the other one uh, is, is nothing like the graph of x squared, it's a bit like the graph of sine because this is still going to be between minus one and one. Um, and when x is zero, we can stop plugging in some values. When x is zero, we get zero squared and then sine of zero is zero. Great. Brilliant progress on my graph. I've got the zero, the origin in there. Um, what's going on then when x gets a bit larger? If I guess it's just a tiny bit larger, then I'm doing a positive number, I'm doing sine of a positive number. I know what that looks like, I get a positive thing. Um, 
and I think it's going to hit a maximum because I know that sine hits a maximum. x squared is eventually going to be big enough that I'll hit a maximum of sine. Um, when's it going to be zero? Um, let's try and solve that. Well, I know that sine is zero when uh, I'm at n times 180 degrees. Um, so that happens when x is plus or minus square root n 180. The square root n uh, gets larger, but it gets larger at a decreasing rate. Uh, uh, root 4 is 2, root 5 is 2 and a bit, root 6 is 2 and a bit and a bit. It takes you ages before you get to 9 and root 9 is 3. Uh, what I mean is uh, that these points where it's 0 are going to get closer and closer together. It's still going between minus 1 and 1, uh, but these points are going to get closer and closer. And it's got this nice symmetry at least that uh, uh, for minus x I get the same sort of shape as x. Okay, um, so this is quite a hard graph to draw. If you are having trouble with it, I would throw it to Desmos and get have a look in Desmos and see what Desmos does. Uh, Desmos is one of my favorite websites, uh, not sponsored. Uh, if you'd like to sponsor the live stream of Desmos, then do get in touch. That would be weird, wouldn't it? Um, it it's a graphing calculator on the internet. We're gonna do five next. There's another requ requirement for request for five in chat. I suppose it could be a requirement for five. This one's weird. It involves a squaring again. Um, so log base two x, we, we know it, we love it. it. It's this thing that grows. Um, log base two of one is zero. Uh, it's got this log spike over here uh, and uh, it grows slower over here. Um, let's think about x squared minus two x plus one. So maybe you've spotted that that's x minus one squared. Now, it's very tempting to write down that log base 2 of x minus 1 squared is equal to 2 log base 2 of x minus 1. Um, that's true if x minus 1 is positive. Um, but I only know what log's doing for positive numbers. Um, I won't let you write that down if, oh, if x minus 1 is negative, because I'm not going to let you do log of a negative number. And in fact, we've got the same sort of problem, that what's really going on is I don't mean to put that negative number there um, inside that logarithm. Logarithms hate having negative numbers inside. And I don't even really mean it because x minus 1 squared is the same thing as 1 minus x squared, right? Uh, those are just the same thing. Um, and it would be equally plausible that I could write down 2 times log base 2 of 1 minus x. Um, this one has exactly the opposite problem, of course. Um, this one's only true if 1 minus x is positive. Um, uh, do you see how these are completely opposite cases? Um, so, um, because I won't let you put logarithm of a negative number, these expressions that we're writing down on the right-hand side um, are only equal in particular cases um, where the argument inside there is positive. I need you to write down a, a logarithm that actually makes sense, I'm afraid. Um, which means that the answer is quite peculiar. Um, the graph um, ends up looking like, uh, well, this is a translation and then a stretch. Um, so there's got the log spike at 1. Um, that's for x bigger than 1. Um, for x less than 1, um, for x less than 1, um, it's a logarithm the other way around. Um, actually, that's one of those combinations I said I didn't like doing, but hey, I guess I got excited with the logarithms. Sorry. Um, it's one of these. Just thought that that goes through the origin. So I should draw this. There we go. Nice and symmetric and going through the origin. Should have put in zero. I've always put in zero. See what happens uh, at x equals zero. Log of one is, is zero. Um, so we get something that doesn't look like a single log curve in the same way that square root of x squared didn't look like a single x line. Um, it's got two different cases. I mean, it's the same thing going on. Um, up here, I'm going to scroll. Up here, um, we have two different cases um, for whether the thing inside was positive or negative, because I needed to write down a positive thing for my square root. Um, down here, you need to write down a positive thing for the argument of your logarithm. Otherwise, your statement's just not true. Um, and that gives us two, two branches. Um, if you don't believe me, try putting, imagining putting in a number that's less than 1. Like, for example, 0. Um, when you put that into the original function at the top of the screen there, you get log base 2 of 0 minus 0 plus 1. Well, there's no con no, nothing controversial there. 0 plus, take away 0 plus 1 is just 1. Log base 2 of 1 is a perfectly normal thing to calculate. It's 0. Um, 
So the graph doesn't really know that it's on the left or on the right, um, which case it's in, I suppose. Um, it doesn't really know. It's just a graph. How would it know? But um, the, the, um, the function, before you start manipulating like this, our function is really, really nice and well behaved, except at one, um, where I think I've seen some of these on graphs come up before. Uh, I started saying log spike because it feels even more spiky if there's two halves to it. Uh, they don't intersect. I haven't drawn this very well. Um, they both, in that logarithmic way that I like, uh, they both get to minus infinity very, very quickly. Um, the logarithm graph sort of doesn't mess around when it comes to x equals 0, or in this case because of the translation, x equals 1. Um, it's going to minus infinity. It's taking its time out here, but around here, logarithm doesn't mess around. It's going down to minus infinity. So both of these curves. It's supposed to be uh, left-right symmetric. Um, mirror image. I'm just bad at drawing. Okay. Um, I like curve sketching. Uh, good. Is the function undefined for x equals 1? Uh, yes, uh, because log 0 is undefined. Uh, which means that this question was a bit uh, not great because I asked you to sketch something that's not defined when x is 1. It's not a great thing. Good. Okay. Uh, is log base 1 over 0? One? What number do you raise one to to get zero? Zero. Okay. Um, question about logarithms in chat. We're going to do logarithms next week as well. Small moment for me to get into logarithm mode. Right, okay. I've lost track a little bit of what we're doing. Uh, we've got a bit of time. Sorry, let me zoom out. Let me zoom in. Five, six, seven. Ah, I wanted to do 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I can't actually remember if people voted for them. So I'm going to just put them on screen and I'm going to talk about uh, what the idea is here. So these are playing that game that I mentioned about giving you an equation and asking you to sketch all of the points that solve that equation. The kind of absolute classic one is cosine at the top there to think about all the points for which cosine x equals cosine y. Um, and one way to think about this is to forget momentarily that x and y are anything to do with coordinates in space. No, x coordinate and y coordinate. Forget that for a moment. Just think of them as numbers. Uh, perhaps we could have cos a equals cos b and for numbers a and b. I'm going to change the letters. Um, I found that if you change the letters to not be x and y, it's easier to forget that they were anything to do with points in space. We'll come back to that. We'll put these points in space. Um, uh, so in here somewhere, Cos A equals cos B. Let's draw cos. Someone's asked me if there's a golden ratio on the sheet. Uh, it's really tempting to just talk about the golden ratio. Uh, so here are some examples of points with the same uh, the same cosine. Uh, these ones are, I think, are 0 and 360 degrees. So that's an example of A and B. And, oh, I've remembered that A and B means X and Y, which is coordinates in the XY space. Um, so here's an example. Um, X is 0, Y is 360 degrees. Um, but here's another example. Um, x is 0, y is minus 360 degrees. Or if you prefer, a is 0, b is minus 360 degrees. So here's another point. Um, way off the bottom of the screen, down here somewhere, minus 360 degrees. So this is not a one-to-one -one function. It's not going to be a picture like a, like a, the function on the right is one-to-one. -one. Um, this is going to be some complicated sketch of, of plots. And in fact, the relationship here uh, is that if you move A up a little bit, you need to move B down a little bit. If I remember that those are Y and X, that means that uh, this is describing a straight line that comes down like this. And the cool thing for cosine, it's a bit of a classic, uh, the cool thing for cosine is that you get this lovely lattice of uh, straight lines uh, that intersect in points like this. So if I keep B at 360 degrees, I can move A a little bit positive or I can move A uh, a little bit negative and bring B down, uh, so I can do something like this. And I get this kind of chain link fence picture of, of lines of points. Uh, it's nothing like the graph of a function y equals f of x, um, it's an uh, infinite grid of squares uh, at angle. It forms a lovely pattern of squares. Michael says in chat, Michael's got a lovely pattern of squares till by 45 degrees. Um, that's me thinking about A's, A's and B's. Um, could instead think about uh, what I know about cosine to say uh, maybe x equals y, or x equals y plus 360 degrees plus n. Um, there's another case in there that maybe 
x plus y could be like in this case uh, their, their average is 180 or 540 or something. something complicated like that. Um, pretty complicated. Okay. We have some other examples on the screen there. Um, I've mixed this up a little bit, combined it together with some algebra, um, just so that we can go through some solutions, I suppose. Um, number 13 on the screen. So 12 is really fun. We're, we're skipping it, but 12 is really fun because that graph is quite complicated. So think about the different solutions and different cases there. You have the option to write out the algebra for x cubed minus x is equal to y cubed minus y. Oh, that way around on your screen. Uh, x cubed minus x is equal to y cubed minus y. Um, so uh, that's one way to think about it. There's lots of stuff going on in that one. Uh, let's do the algebra in 12, 13, and 13 14, 15. Um, so 13, maybe you could spot that uh, um, x squared plus y squared squared is present there in those first three terms uh, because of the two from multiplying. Um, and the next term, that once you've seen that, the next term suspiciously looks a bit like uh, it involves x squared plus y squared as well, and it's a cheeky quadratic. Um, for x squared plus y squared, there are two solutions, and they each describe a circle. x squared plus y squared equals number. Uh, turns out these are two circles. Uh, and the points that satisfy this are two circles. Um, 14, uh, similar idea. You could maybe spot that there's something going on here with x squared plus y squared cubed, and then find one or two circles. Um, 15, these questions are easier to write than they are to do. Um, to write them, I just need to have an idea like two circles, write down the equations for circles and multiply them together, uh, and then I'm done. Um, to solve them, you have to undo whatever it was that I did. And 15 is an example of where I had an idea, rearranged it, and then it's a really hard question to undo that. I probably wouldn't even put that on the map. Anyway, once I've said it, realized I wanted to uh, use it. Uh, there is a way to rearrange it. Uh, if you move the y squared terms on the right, because they both involve y squared, and you move the x squared terms, <laughs> no, you can't do that, can you? Because there's one that doesn't involve x squared or y squared. So if you move the y squared terms on the right to try desperately to pull out a factor of y, I said right and now I'm putting them on the left, so sorry about that. Uh, the terms that you have left over are over here, uh, x, y is going to be left over. I have swapped the sides around. I'm so sorry, but uh, you can sort of pull them out like that. And then it gets a little bit clearer what's going on because there's a factor of x around here. And you can start to solve this, uh, factorize it to work out which two functions you multiply together. It's one of those ones where uh, multiply. Uh, Miles would like infinite circles in one equation. Hmm. Are these the kind of questions that we might ask? <laughs> hang on, hang on. Hang on. Um, questions in chat. I haven't looked at chat for a second. Is there a sample paper for the new format of maths? Um, not really, because uh, it's the same test. We are going to give you a, a sample of what the software looks like for viewing the questions, if that's what you mean. Uh, a sample of, of what it's going to look like to, to view the questions. Uh, I'm not writing, technically, a sample paper would be if I wrote lots more sample questions. Um, I'm not doing that. I'm using some previous questions in the digital format, if you like. Miles, yeah, it's two circles in one, qu one equation. Um, you might be interested in something like uh, sine has got lots of solutions, right? Uh, so maybe something like this might have lots of solutions where x squared plus y squared could be, uh, well, it could be some multiple of 180 degrees, uh, and then those can give me different, different circles. Uh, if you want your multiples to turn out to be, if you want your radiuses to turn out to be uh, um, linearly spaced, you may want a square root in here as well. Yeah, I think you may want a square root in there as well, uh, so that they're equally spaced. I mean, it's up to you. Do what you like. Do your circles. Right, okay. <laughs> I'm getting slightly sidetracked. Uh, would you ask this in the interview? I might ask this in the interview. I think these questions are not quite right for interview. Um, this is technicality, but um, a lot of these ones down there, 13, 14, 15, um, have got like one idea. And then I'm kind of testing if you can have the idea or not. I think they make good revision or brain teasers for something like this, where we're getting ready to do some math questions, uh, because well, brain teaser, can you spot the thing? But there's only really one thing going on there. Um, and once you've spotted it, it's a bit, oh, I see. 
uh, I sort of think that asking you to do infinitely many circles in one equation might have been a good question, except I've just written it on screen there, so that's a shame. Oh, that might mean fun. Uh, sine x squared plus y squared looks insane, says someone in chat, which makes me think, does Desmos struggle with it? Uh, does Desmos struggle with it? Let's find out. Uh, I know there's some things like this that... Uh, Desmos can't do. Oh, it's really not happy with my... Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's worked out quite nicely. Uh, full screen, please. I want to show them Desmos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's doing the thing. I've heard about this. This is a weird graphic thing. Um, so it's supposed to be lots of circles. Um, but because of... I don't know if this is just my display or is this your display as well? Oh, it's weird. It's just my display. Um, depending on the size of your screen you can maybe see some off-center circles. <laughs> uh, it gets worse if I zoom. Uh, zooming is a bad idea. Uh, you can maybe see these kind of halos of off-centered circles. Uh, that's a graphical thing, and it goes away if you resize your screen. The graph is good. Oh, look, it says this equation contains fine detail that has not been fully resolved. Learn more. Was I right about the square root? We're at a little halfway break here. Um, we're, on, uh, we're at 6 o'clock. Um, if you've been looking at a screen for the last half an hour, uh, last hour continuously, don't forget to take a break. Um, don't forget to mess around with Desmos. No, that's not one of them. Um, don't forget to, yeah, that's right. Uh, don't forget to drink some water uh, and blink. Do not look directly into the hypnotic circles. Right, yeah, that was a bit weird, wasn't it? The square root does make it nicer. There we go, the square root nicer. Um, can we make it weirder? Um, I sort of want to do like... Oh, it's really broken, my computer. Ha <laughs> ha Am I still alive? I've broken Desmos. I'm so sorry, Desmos. If anyone from Desmos is watching, oh, they're not going to sponsor us now. I put a one third on it. That good? No, I don't know about that. One thirtieth? Oh, I don't know about that. That was pretty good. Two thirds? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> right, okay, welcome back. Um, so, leave, don't save that. Um, uh, which was, was it, uh, which equation was for infinite circles? It was, uh, this one over here. Uh, sign of root x squared plus y squared. Or anything, I put the root in to equally space them, but just x squared plus y squared. Um, I think I've seen a YouTube video actually with some graphic glitches like that before. Um, poor old Desmos. Um, uh, yeah, yeah that, was, that was pretty bad. Uh, please don't get us to sketch that, says <laughs> in chat. Right, okay. Sorry, I've had a very strange day involving lots of uh, open day stuff. That was that was great. That was just what I needed. What a great break. It did break, so can't argue with that. Right, cool. We'll do some uh, Mac questions. I think these Mac questions are not too bad. If it's your first time watching the live stream, um, this is maybe a good place to start. Uh, it's from 2008, which has got a little bit of a reputation as being perhaps a bit of an easy Mac paper, um, but we'll see. Oh, there we go. That's the, that's the question. If someone in chat suggests, that's the question that you see on your hologram. Uh, you have your your VR goggles and the, the graph appears before you. That sounds horrible. Uh, right, okay. Uh, Miles agrees in chat. Miles says these look pretty uh, chill. So I've got two references to Stranger Things in chat. That's good. I should really catch up with that show. Um, right. I get endorsement of Desmos in chat. Oh, hang on, this might get the, uh, the uh, endorsement back again. Desmos endorsed in chat here. Um, very easy to break, but impossible to crash. There you go. Not, never crashed, only broken. Right, good, okay. Um, it's a transformations test. Uh, we are being asked about particular transformations on the next three pairs of axes, A, B, and C, are graphs of f of minus x, f of x minus 1 and minus f of x. Which one's which? Um, let me know in Slido chat uh, which one you think is which. Uh, that's Is that impossible? No, that's fine. You can put them in the order, right? What's the first one? What's the second one? What's the third one? We're not doing a poll. Too complicated to set up a poll. For... It'd be easy to set up a poll. 
There's six options, right, for the permutations of A, B, C. Uh, yeah, so one of them reflects my attitude towards setting up a poll. Sorry, just let me know in chat whether you would like to uh, do, what order you would like to do these transformations, but just one transformation, yes. Uh, and we've got a hint in chat, thank you, Lucia. Um, uh, first one, think like a mirror in the reflection questions. Yeah, so this first one is a stretch by a factor of minus one, which is perhaps not a great sentence. Um, maybe more natural to think about that as a reflection. Uh, so some people like to separate separate out the case of minus one as a special. That's a reflection. Um, so we've got some folks in chat. Uh, and we've got different ways of denoting a permutation in chat as well. So that's, that's exciting. Um, uh, people are going one, two, three, rather than ABC. Um, F of minus X, so let's talk about A. F of minus X, that means if I show you a number like three, first, flip it, minus three. Now look up what F of minus three was. Well, F of minus three is very negative. So if I show you another three, show me something very negative. That looks like these two pictures. Um, and in fact, if I show you a number like negative two, anticipating the minus sign, you see, if I show you a number like minus two, this says, oh, flip it to get two. And then plug in zero and you get this turning point. So I'm expecting something around there. I'm um, putting that to turn up there, you see, because I had to put in I had to put in minus two to get rid of the minus sign. So I think, yeah. Middle one looks like a A. Am I wrong? Middle one looks like A to me, I think. I'm not agreeing with chat. Chat's very much gone for B C A. Like you all say B C A. Ah! That's, that's the yes. No, you agree with me. <laughs> ah. It's been a long day. You all agree with me. <laughs> B. The letters are under here. There we go. There are the letters. <laughs> they were hiding. Um, B is the middle one. Because it's the second letter of the alphabet. I can do this. Um, B is the middle one. And it's, it, it lines up with F of minus X. Um, A, B, C is the order of the pictures. <laughs> the equations don't have letters. Everything's going a bit going a bit silly, um, which probably affects whether you think this is ABC or CBA or something like that. Um, there is some disagreement in chat between uh, which way around these things are, possibly. Um, I think the translation is the easiest one to spot. Uh, so translation is going to keep it looking more or less the same. Uh, there's f of x just disappearing off the top of the page there. Um, but if I translate it, it's going to be mostly like the same shape. It's going to have turning points in that order, just somewhere else. Um, and that looks like C to me. So that translation in the middle is going to be C. I think I might have said out loud equations A, B, and C. So I, I, I caused this chaos. Um, and there's no way for me to take away the chaos. So there we go. Um, okay, so we've got translation for C. That's the middle one. The middle function is C. Um, I'm pointing on my screen, you can't see. <laughs> um, the translation in the middle, the middle function is the right graph C. Um, the uh, middle graph is the first equation. And that leaves A over there, that left graph. I think that is the right equation, if we're picking the right equation. Uh, uh, take f of x and then flip it, uh, that minus sign at the front flips it, reflection in the x-axis. That's another thing to remember, that the minus sign there is, is reflecting kind of, it's kind of a stretch in the y direction, which means reflection in the x-axis. It is Somehow this one topic is full of minus signs, wrong way around errors. Um, I have a bit lost track of what that means in terms of the letters, but I think we are looking at C. No, not C, that's the translation. Wrong straight away, I think. That first equation, no, I, I'm give up. <laughs> I'm never going to say it correctly. Good, right, what are we doing? Uh, we've got a sketching question next. Um, and look how uh, this one says to carefully label any stationary points. So I'm going to have a go at that, I think. Um, maybe you can as well at home, uh, if you've got a scrap of paper or something. Uh, uh, here's what I think. Um, I know what x squared looks like. Um, and I know what... Uh, 2x minus x squared looks like as well, actually, because 2x minus x squared is a uh, parabola that's got roots at 0 and at 2. Uh, so, probably like this. I reckon it's taller. 
I guess they're both like X square. Let's not overdo it. Um, uh, it's two X, so it's bigger. So it's, it's oh, it's negative. Ah, ooh, means I'm wrong. It's the other way up. I've drawn them upside down. This is X squared. Yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> I know what X squared looks like. I know what X squared degree two X looks like. It's got roots at zero and T. Everything's good. Everything's upside down. Today has got so many minus signs. Um, so if I want to do two to the power of minus these things, uh, where these things are positive, I'm going to get two to the power of minus. That is going to be a negative. Uh, going to be between zero and one. Um, and where these things are negative, there's a minus sign, so they get flipped to positive, and then t to the positive thing is going to give me something that's bigger than one. Um, but that first one that I'm supposed to draw is just going to come up, because uh, over here it's two to the very neg very negative thing. I regret drawing the graph of x squared. I should probably have drawn the graph of minus x squared. Let me know in chat, did you draw the graph of x squared, or did you draw the graph of minus x squared? Or did you draw neither and just go for it? You know, just go, you get in there, just do the sketch. Two to the minus x squared. Weird combination of powers and exponentials and negative signs all over the place. But I think it looks a bit like this. I've, I've tried to draw it with a perfect mirror symmetry in the reflection in the y-axis there. Uh, I say tried to. Uh, and it's going to, I think, tend towards down, down towards zero. Uh, someone in chat is a bit upset that uh, Matt question, in this particular Matt question seems sort of fine and some of the other ones are a bit harder, I guess. I guess I apologise. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Um, somebody's already looking ahead at part three. Uh, I need to sketch uh, two to the two uh, x minus x squared, which from the completing the square episode is actually this. I think. Yep, yeah, it's that. Um, so there's some stretching and uh, translating going on in here. Um, this one actually weirdly also goes through zero comma one. Um, and it's twice as big, it's twice as twice as tall and translated to the right a little bit, which I think means it's like this, I think. Um, I don't particularly want to think about whether these things are equal. Oh, I suppose I could think about whether they're equal. No, good, okay, I've started mumbling. Probably time to move on. Um, these kind of look a bit like a, a normal distributions from statistics. It's probably not worth worrying about. Um, uh, we've got that last part of the question then, uh, part three. Uh, which talks about uh, defining an integral. Um, what they mean by that is that here is the integral. Um, it's another way of saying let i, the function i, let that be equal to the following thing. Um, they're calling it an integral. I guess they could say define the following function. That might be clearer. Um, if it said following function, then I think we'd all be on the same page. Oh, i is a bit of a weird name for a function, but it's i taking the input c. Um, they're referring to it as an integral because it's in the form of an integral on the right-hand side. Maybe that's a little bit misleading because um, what actually happens for the, the object that we're defining, i on the left, is it takes a number in and it returns a number out. Um, it does that with integration, but uh, number in, number out. What's the equation for a normal distribution? Yeah, good question. Uh, good question. I sort of said it was not worth worrying about, but I am going to slightly worry about it. Uh, if you want a normal distribution, your basic normal distribution, it's something like this, with an E in it. Uh, and I've been a little bit cheeky. Um, I have put a constant out the front. Uh, I need a constant out there to make the area one. No way to work out what the constant is at this level. It involves pi, it's lovely. It involves the square root of pi, which is just fantastic. Um, and then other normal curves for different mean or different standard deviation involve translating in scaling the graph, scaling for the variance, and uh, translating for the mean. Um, so these ideas about translation functions also turn up in uh, statistics. You weren't expecting any statistics today, but here we are. Someone in chat has asked for this. I believe there's a factor of two here. Uh, and I believe there is a factor of sigma under here. It's been a while since I had to write this down. Not certain I've got that right. The test question in chat was, what's the equation for the normal distribution? I think I've got it. Let me know in chat whether I've got my sigmas in the wrong place. I now really think the sigma should be below. Mm, sigma big, don't scale it up. Sigma big, it's getting wider, so we should make it narrower. We should make it shorter as well. I don't want any pies in there. I think I've got the twos right. So 
So sigma is big if it's wide, that stretches it wide, and then we'll make it short to compensate. Good, okay. Wide and short. Oh, an anonymous person in chat says they saw me at the open day yesterday. Lovely. I saw you too, but now you're anonymous, so I've got no idea who you are. Which is nice, isn't it? I'm going to put your comment on the screen. So that everyone else can look. There's an anonymous person who has at the open day. From my point of view, there were about uh, 500 anonymous people at the open day yesterday. Because uh, most people, when, when they come to the open day, don't tell me who they are. Um, fine, obviously. I uh, think sigma squ squared in the third. Yeah, okay, maybe my square root stops here. To the left of the sigma. Okay, right, we're moving on. Uh, <laughs> we've got a little bit sidetracked by statistics. Thank you, chat, for distracting me with statistics. So much better. If you're like, able to do that in true and get the square root of pi, really satisfying. Um, we're not going to do that on the Matt live stream. Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, here's what's going on. Uh, we've got 2 to the power of minus x minus c squared. Um, and the question says, um, we can choose any value of c we like. Um, so imagine some of those, please. And we choose any value of c we like. And we'd like to make the integral i of c, which is the integral from 0 to 1, uh, as big as we can. So let's try and imagine what this function looks like. Integration is something to do with the area underneath. And this is going to be a translation, isn't it, of the 2 to the x graph that we just had. The 2 to the x graph that we just had, but translated left or right, um, depending on whether c is positive or negative, um, maybe to the right by c units, in the positive x direction by c units. Um, what we would like is we would like to make the area between 0 and 1, so here's 0, here's 1, we would like to make the area, so look at that bit, we would like to make the area under the curve between 0 and 1 as big as we can. Now the curve's symmetric, so I think what we want to do, see how it's getting bigger now? More area underneath this curve as it comes in left. Now loads of area underneath this curve. Um, so now what's happening is the bit over here is going down, the bit over here is going up as I move left. Um, I think it's sort of now the overall area I think is going down. Um, because we're only gaining a little bit over here and we're losing quite a lot over there. So it's like quite a complicated question. Um, do you realise that overall the picture then of what I've described as that, as that was moving through was not very much area, more area, more area, more area. At some point your fortune reverses and it starts being less area, less area, less area. So it's really not very much area. So it's a function, very complicated function. We seem to go up and then down again. So I think what I want to do is park it in the middle. There is a maths club video about statistics, so you can see that one. It's the Gaussian integral. Oh, did we do root pi on a maths club? Are you saying we did root pi on the maths club? That would be lovely. If I can just point to the maths club video and say we did root pi over there. Um, so, yeah, good idea. Uh, a question in the test, how do we pick up a... Okay. Question in chat, how do we, how do we pick up a drawing and uh, move it across the page in the exam? And you see, this is one of, the, one of the weaknesses of doing a test on paper is that... Uh, you can't do you can't do this. You don't really want to do this, but there you go. Um, I'm trying to show you on the screen, by the way, what's happening in my head. This is not always a good idea, um, but in my head, I really am imagining this thing translating. I'm trying to visualize it. Um, and maybe it's how I like to think about things. I like to uh, imagine things moving, and I like to imagine uh, the sort of uh, way things change. Um, I think not everyone's like that in terms of how they visualize these things. Uh, some people would love to do some algebra on this, right? Uh, so some people see this in uh, their comfort zones. They want to think about this algebraically, uh, which means I think that they want to differentiate it, which is really hard, or they want to integrate it, which is even harder. I don't know. Uh, question in chat. Am I going to answer any questions at the end? I think this is one of the occasions where I might have time at the end to ask, ask some questions. So, I think yes. I'm going to try and give short answers to questions. It's all my to-do list, get better at answering questions. I think I want C to be one half. Uh, to park it in the middle is what I put in the solution document. You got it travelling around, just park it in the middle, get loads of area around your cat. It's symmetric, so that seems like a good place to put it. If you don't put it C equals a half, then why not shunt it towards the middle of it? That's not a proof, that's just me bartering. Um, uh, okay, any books that help with math? Um, sort of, if you print all of the question sheets and all of the solutions, um, you don't get a front cover, so you have to draw that one yourself, um, but it kind of acts like a book. 
and it's free. So uh, if you'd like a book about Matt, this is the responses on in chat, uh, why not print all of my PDFs uh, and tie them together? Don't tie them together. Right, good. It's been a long day. <laughs> We're on to one more Matt question for the day. Um, we thought this one went kind of okay, I think. We just sketching it this way. Compound formulas as an extension in here. Um, oh, we've got some hints. If you want to see the hints, we've now done the question. But if you wanted to see the hints, um, I said some of this out loud. But also, you can get a version of that uh, on the worksheet. And look at this idea here. Sketch two to the minus x minus c squared for various values of c, which I can do using uh, this computer. Whereas for you, that's different. Different pictures. Uh, I think that's a good hint. Weirdly self-congratulatory. Um, over here, we've got some uh, exercises where I was thinking about getting you to sketch um, what uh, what the thing would look like if you did some of these other transformations. Um, so, some of the more complicated ones that maybe ask about on mass involve um, squaring. Squaring is really fun. Um, I'd like you to have a think about this. I'm going to show you the pictures um, because they're cool. Um, if you haven't had a chance to think about these four functions at the bottom there yet, um, don't look at this too hard. I would like you to try and recreate this at home. Um, here's what the pictures look like. So we've got, we got four of these to go through. Um, f of x squared, um, if you put it into Desmos or something, looks like this. We can observe that's got some sort of symmetry. Um, because if I put in negative or positive values of x, the very first thing that happens is squaring. And squaring doesn't caring whether you put in a positive number or a negative number. Um, so you get this symmetry. Um, and it's got these turning points because the original f had turning points uh, somewhere or other. I'm not sure you knew they were at one. Um, I might have, maybe I shouldn't have labeled these points. Um, you definitely don't know where they are from the original sketch. Oops. <laughs> okay, my picture shouldn't be labeled. Um, f of x squared, though, so f of x and then square, that one does care whether you uh, put in positive or negative numbers to different stuff. And because it's going to apply f first, and f had different opinions about positive and negative numbers, totally different results, um, which means that you get different things on the left and right. No obvious symmetry. Um, I mean, it's always positive, so that's nice. And it has to be because of the squaring. This one's always positive by a sort of coincidence that f was always positive. Um, oh, yes. Um, c is uh, one half because uh, we want to get a big area, and you get a big area by putting the big bit of graph between 0 and 1. The way to do that is to translate just by 1 half. If you translate just by 1 half, then the turning point, which was the turning point maximum, which was at x equals 0, is now x equals half just perfectly in the middle of the two edges of that integral. So that we get loads of area. Um, if I gave you the graph and I said, please cut me a chunk of this graph width 1, width 1, uh, but you can take any chunk you like and you want to get as much area as possible, you would line that up with the middle. You would take the middle bit. And that's the same question. If I choose which bit I want, you could be moving the inch that you're taking, uh, or you could be moving the graph with your scissors ready, <laughs> scissors ready to cut uh, 0 and 1 and shunt the graph past. You're going to take the big bit, right? If it's a cake and you're cutting the cake, you're going to take the tall bit of cake. <laughs> line it up. <laughs> line it up. Here are the knives for cutting cake. Put it right in the middle, please, so that I can have as much cake as I can. Um, it's symmetric. It's, it's a good reason there. If it was asymmetric, like some of these pictures, really complicated question, really hard. Um, really hard to work out. Very detailed calculation needed to properly assess uh, how much cake I'm going to get when I cut this up. I'm hungry. Right. Uh, oh, there's a link in chat. What's the link in chat? Uh, uh, Miles has done another one with lots of things. Uh, there's a link in chat, which is probably some sort of... I mean, Rick Astley has done some good work recently. Oh, no, it's actually a link to me. Brill and David. And we're talking about root pi? Oh, we're doing some integration and stuff. Do we talk about root pi in that one? Good times. Right, okay. Yeah. There's a link in chat to see some integration videos. Good. I forgot we did root pi a couple of years ago. Um, why is this second one not symmetrical? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So this one is almost symmetrical, which is maybe off-putting. Um, let me show you f again. There's f. So f's got a negative bit and a positive bit. And they're not quite the same. They're almost the same. But on the left, it goes up a little bit and then down. And on the right, it goes down a little bit and then up. So you might think those turn out to be kind of the same. Um, but it's not the same. There's some gradient there near the origins of gradient. Um, and that means it's bigger on one side than it is on the other. And what this new thing does is it's taking that and squaring it. So something was bigger on the left than it is on the right, 
it's squared, it stays different, right? Um, it's different, but it's not negative of the other side, right? So near near the y-axis, in the original picture up there, it's sort of, uh, let's call that 0.9 and 1.1. That's bigger on the left than it is on the right, just near that, just near that y-intercept. And then f of x squared is going to take that and magnify the difference. Um, so we get this thing, uh, which over here has got this kind of gradient going on, which is why it's not symmetric. It's bigger on this side than it is on that side. Uh, and then things get worse over here, right? Because over here it's doing some sort of x squared and keeping that. Oh, gosh. Okay, uh, if that's not bad enough, the other ones that we asked you for in the extension uh, look like this. I have to show you these because one of them is in the thumbnail, um, which is just lovely. Uh, you can do some really weird stuff if you start putting squares into equations. These look almost nothing like the original f of x. Okay, so homework, I think, if uh, this is, I think, too hard for maths, which is why it's in an extension. Um, if you would like to think about things that are harder than maths, you can do some squaring, put squares inside your favourite functions. Uh, for example, sine of x then square is very different from sine of x squared. Those are just very different shapes. Okay, how do I know the shape of these graphs? Oh, to work out the shape, I thought really carefully about what the value was at each point. Um, there's a little bit of a lie there that I got my computer to think about the value of each point to sketch the pictures to actually make those graphs. Um, but when I was doing this on paper earlier, uh, I thought about the values. I thought about the sort of distortion that you would get from uh, squaring small numbers versus squaring big numbers. When you square a big number, whoa, chaos. When you square a small number, you either get less change or it gets smaller, which is weird perhaps, but you, you get this kind of distortion on the, on the picture. Um, it's not a simple translation or stretch, but it's like weird. Further, far away, but it's going to stretch more. I don't know, that, that got a little bit a little bit too much there, I think. We're going to do another math question. Uh, it's half past six. If you've been half an hour since you last blinked, then don't forget to blink. If it's half an hour since you last drank any water, it's, it's a hot day over here in Oxford. I, I'm trying to make sure I drink water. Question in chat. When does combinatorics come over to the maths degree? Uh, almost constantly. It's a fundamental skill. Um, but in particular, there's a very good number theory course in the third year in Oxford, and a bit of number theory in the second year too. Uh, you've done something interesting. You've set your name as anonymous. So all the other anonymous people are like the empty set for their name, but your name is anonymous and you've typed it, which is subtly different from the empty set. Interesting. Right, good. Okay. Um, uh, here's another math question. It's a little bit geometry, a little bit algebra, a little bit... Um, Drawing graphs. Um, I'm going to focus on drawing graphs, I think, when we get there. We've got the, this definition of Q, which is uh, a quarter circle, um, a bit of a circle of radius 1. Uh, let's try and line it up down there. There we go. Uh, that's my picture of Q. That's this diagram here. Um, on the axes in figure A, the thing that I can't do anymore because you can't draw on the computer screen, um, sketch the graphs of x plus y equals one half. I mentioned this one before actually. Um, if x plus y is one half, you can actually rearrange that to be y is one half minus x, uh, which is this line. Drawn in lovely shade of pink. Because I clicked on the wrong pen. Um, uh, if x plus y is one, then oh, maybe x is zero and y is one. Maybe uh, x is one and y is zero. Or oh, it's a straight line. So things that join those two points up. I guess I've got to use a different color now. Um, uh, and x plus y is 3 over 2, then I guess I need to join these dots. Hard question that's very relevant for the next part of this uh, exercise. Um, does that light blue line that we just drew, does it touch the circle or not? Um, because we're asked for this largest value of x plus y that's achieved at points in that quarter circle. Um, have I made x plus y too big now? Was 3 over 2 too greedy? Um, but has that moved it so that there are no points in Q, the shaded region, no points in Q that actually satisfy such a crazy value of x plus y? Um, and the answer turns out to be yes, that was too much. Um, you need to turn it back a bit, dial it back a bit if you want to find points that actually exist in Q that satisfy such, a, such an outlandish condition. Um, uh, combinatorics means... Um, counting problems. It's the things that we were doing with the binomial uh, coefficients uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we looked at the binomial theorem, we looked at those coefficients about choosing problems, 
Uh, we had things where you had to pick the right coefficient and have out of 10 things, choose me five of them. How many ways are there to do that? That's combinatorics. Uh, and that, that's combinatorics at the moment. At university, there are more questions that are not just as straightforward as choose some of these objects from this box of things. Other counting problems that you might want to do. Um, okay, um, so geometry question, which I'm going to spend a little bit of time on the geometry question. It's kind of a separate geometry kind of thing, isn't it? Um, what if we took a line that was just tangent to the circle? This feels like the biggest value we could get away with. Um, so I'm going to move that slightly in, except following some feedback, I'm going to draw a new line rather than moving it around. What if it was just tangent? Uh, you know, so this would be a tangent, this would be a radius, this would be at right angles. Oh, hey, we're doing a geometry question. Right. Um, so off we go. Um, question in chat. Uh, what ha changes happen to the mat? Um, can I find it on the website? Yes, you have a choice. Uh, you could go to the mat website now or you could rewind this YouTube video to the start. Uh, we did an announcement at the start. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, and the answer for this bit is that x plus y should be root 2. Um, which is almost guessable if you remember that this is very symmetric, it's very 45 degree themed. Um, 45 degrees. So the kind of mood is very root two around, so it sort of feels like root twos. Uh, and we know it's slightly less than 1.5, so it feels like it is root two, you know, it's bigger than one, so it's not going to be root two over two. Um, this is not maths, this is just jamming, right? Um, we should do the geometry. Uh, the geometry is that this is a 45 degree, tri 45 degree triangle. Um, it's going to go through a point over here, and I know this side length is 1, um, so I've got this right angled uh, isosceles triangle with sides 1, 1, and a mystery number. Um, the mystery was solved by the ancient Greeks. The side length is root 2, uh, which means the y intercept is also root 2. Um, and uh, that's the value of x plus y. Cool. Uh, somebody says thanks. Due to the chat lag, I can't remember what you're thanking me for. Oh, I'm just going to take it generally. Just off general endorsement. Someone is grateful. And I'm all about that general gratitude. So it's been a very long day. Um, okay, this is a good example of a math question, though. Whether whether or not we're focusing on the geometry or the uh, craft sketching, which so far hasn't been that hard. Um, there's something going on here in terms of the structure of the question that I want to really point out. It's something that I like to do with map questions. Um, so uh, it's something I can spot when it happens in other map questions as well. The kind of mind of the examiner here is part one, draw these graphs, tell me the largest value. Thinking about those graphs because we just got you to draw the graphs. Part two, same sort of idea but harder graphs. You know, we're, we're ramping it up. Um, largest value of, and now look, there's a thing which is going to be probably similar to the thing we just did, and then there's another part. It's not actually a separate number here, but it says, what's the largest value of something else? Which to me screams similar idea, slightly different. Um, slightly different similar idea. Um, looks similar, probably not going to be the same idea again. Um, probably a twist. And I can see a minus sign. And today has really been all about minus signs. So it's got to change something, right? And there's part three, which is different. Okay. Uh, and on the next season figure B, we've got to do some more sketching. Let's bring that over here. Um, and these will say xy equals, and then some numbers. Um, I guess we're going to think about xy. Um, xy equals one is the one that I think about first, I suppose. Um, that's the graph. Um, That means y is 1 over x, or if x is 0, then don't divide by x, kids. We've only got two rules around here. One of them is don't divide by 0. Uh, OK, that's going to be the graph. Uh, y is 1 over x. Or I suppose I'm going to label it x for equals 1 to make everyone happy. How did I get 1 for the sides? Oh, uh, the quarter circle Q is uh, a circle of radius 1. Uh, so I, I had to use something about the grey circle, right? Uh, the grey circle has to come into it. So for this geometry over here, there's a, there's a one. That light blue colour on grey is really hard to see. So I'm going to label it like that. Okay. You can kind of see the 45 degrees. That right angle, also painful to look at. There we go. Good. Fixed it. Okay. Man, 45 degrees. Classic thing going on. How did I know it was 45 degrees? I guess that's symmetry. 
That's not very really convincing, is it? I suppose more accurately, I knew that this one was 45 degrees. <laughs> Yes, everything's 45 degrees, right? I knew this one was 45 degrees because I know the gradient of this line. It's like, uh, it's a translation of y equals minus x, which is very symmetrically minus 45 degree kind of thing. Set properly. Goes through the point one comma minus one, put in your triangle, there's, there's, there's the 45 degrees. Ooh, uh, I could sometimes, I guess, draw this triangle on the box. It's like, Cool, right, okay. Uh, I shouldn't call it X, should I? X is really variable. I'm making this diagram worse. I'm going to move on. Um, okay, so XY is 1 is over here, and then I suppose when XY is 2 is going to be larger values of X or Y or both. Um, both a bit larger. Uh, I guess it's going to go through 2, comma 1, and 1, comma 2. So I should try and I recognize this 1 over X graph is one of the ones that I should be able to sketch, I guess, because powers of X, I'm supposed to know about those. Uh, and then there's this x, y is one quarter, which is quite a small value, isn't it? Um, so that's like 0 0.5, 0 0.5, uh, or 0 0.251. Uh, one 0.25 would be on that curve as well. Other examples of points. Um, other examples are available, for example, all of these. Goes down, around, and out the other side. Um, so this one, I think, fairly obviously goes through Q. So there are examples of points in Q, such as this one here. Um, examples of points in Q um, that have x, y equal to one quarter. Uh, so this one here, by the way, has got a value of x squared plus y squared plus 4xy is equal to 3. Oh, dear. That's off the bottom. Um, right here. But it feels like x squared plus y squared will get larger if I make the uh, distance from the origin larger, which I can do. Uh, and x, y seems to be also getting larger if I go away from the origin. Um, so, can I get greedy and just make all of this large? You know, like make x squared plus y squared large, have my cake and eat it. It's cake again, still hungry. Um, and make x, y large at the same time. And the answer is yes, I can make both of those things large. Um, chat's going to tell me how to make things large at the same time. Uh, cool. Ah, uh, so just doing book recommendations in chat. We've got a, a current student around. Uh, let me stay. Ooh. Ooh. There's a suggestion in chat that I really like. Let's put this on the screen. Um, cool, it's got a suggestion to factorize it as x plus y squared, x plus y squared, plus 2xy, and then think about perhaps the previous part of the question. How do you make x plus y big? We already know that. How do you make xy big? Well, that's a new question, right? So this function, we've got x plus y squared plus 4xy. Excuse me. You could think of it as occurring in two parts. This one and this one. Or if you prefer, you can factorize it in that way that is happening at upper, upper chat, uh, the super chat. Oh, I'm losing my voice a little bit. Uh, how do I know that x, y equals 1 does not intersect the quarter disk? That is a good question. Um, I suppose I knew roughly what shape it was, and I knew that it was going through a point up here somewhere, um, which to me feels like it's already missed at that point. Um, coming in this top half of the picture up here, uh, it's coming in from infinity, and I guess it's not going to go around and then back out again. Um, and actually, maybe this line is important again. Um, if I look at the picture sideways, it feels like that's the closest point of approach. Um, none of this is maths. We need to go and solve something, right? So we could look at whether... Um, I think it's important whether this, whether this curve uh, has any solutions that lie on the edge. The edge is really interesting to me because that's where x squared plus y squared is really big. So if I can make x squared plus y squared really big, I kind of want to know how big I can make x y as well. Um, I think it's clear that if I'm inside the quarter circle, I can make x and y big by just increasing x y. Uh, I'm sorry, I can make x y larger by just moving closer towards the edge, right? Get more extreme, make x bigger, make y bigger. Then x y will be large. Um, so I'm interested in the edge. That's my justification for thinking about x squared plus y squared. Um, and something I know about x squared plus y squared. Chat, sorry, chat, you're slightly in the way. Um, something I know about x squared plus y squared is, um, oh, it's positive. That's a good start. Um, but I've realized I know this thing about x squared plus y squared in terms of 2xy, which is that I know that this thing is positive. Or zero. 
uh, because that's x take away y squared. Because I know that, I can write down that x squared plus y squared is bigger than or equal to 2xy, which means that if x squared plus y squared is 1 on the edge, then xy is less than or equal to the biggest value of xy you can do is 1 half, which actually occurs at the same point. Um, this point on the left, the same point um, is where you make xy large. We've still got this symmetry. This mirror image in that line y equals x. That, that reflection is too hard for me to ask you to draw it or mat. Um, but observing that it happens in your pictures is something you might just spot about the things that you've drawn. And it's true that there's this mirror image in the line y equals x reflecting in a diagonal line. Oh, that way around for you. There we go. Um, I'm reflected in a vertical line. It's very confusing. Uh, describing mirror images while also being inside a mirror image is uh, extremely odd. Uh, okay, um, so what's a more sensible way to spot this? So I kind of pulled this out of nowhere, which is very frustrating. What a more sensible way to spot this? Um, I suppose a more sensible way to spot this is perhaps to check what's going along, what's going on on the line y equals x. And you see along that line, x y is merely uh, x squared. Uh, on that line, um, which well, you would clearly make large by making x as big as you can, um, while of course staying within the staying within the quarter circle because you have to if we're talking about points that are in Q. Um, and the furthest you can go, the furthest you can go is to go to the, the outside here, which is how you discover the point, uh, whatever this is, one over root two, one over root two, or something like that. It's the same thing that we were just talking about. Um, you might try looking along other lines as well. Um, and if you look along other lines, you discover a very different relationship. Again, you want to make x nice and large, so it's the value around here that's that's worth talking about. Uh, this is the this is the the curve, I suppose, algebraically. I'm trying to explain without just pulling this out of nowhere. Um, algebraically, if you've got x squared plus y squared is equal to one, um, and you want uh, x y to be large, you kind of have this option. But what you could say is that you want x squared y squared to be large. That gets squares involved, you see. Um, and then what you really want is that x squared, well, y squared is equal to 1 minus x squared. And you want that to be large. Um, x squared, 1 minus x squared is, is, is large. You could think about that graph. Um, I guess I need x to be bigger than 0. Uh, I guess I need it to be uh, not too big. Uh, so x, x squared can't be too big because it's going to add up with y squared to give 1. So it's like x squared between 0 and 1. Yeah, that's where, that's where the circle is. Right? Um, so, not too, not too big. Um, this is not that hard to sketch. It's like one of the x squared things, so you could draw that as well. That's maybe a way to get into it without thinking about this weird, like, oh, I just wrote down this weird square and knew that x squared and y squared had something to do with xy. Anyway, to get to the point, um, xy, it turns out, is um, at most one half in Q. Um, and it does that at a point with x squared plus y squared is one. Um, this is very nice. Uh, this means that if I choose that point, which we've pointed out a few times, um, I'll get x plus y squared is 1, the biggest it can be, and I'll get 4xy is 2, the biggest it can be. That'll be 3. So I lied over here. It wasn't 3 over there. It was 3 on the outside. <laughs> well, I did x plus y squared wrong. Good times. <laughs> Yes, because x squared was merely one quarter, wasn't it? So it'll be one half plus. Oh, chat, you've got to tell me when I do something stupid. Otherwise, I look really stupid. Um, so it's merely three over two. If we go to the outside, it's as big as three. That's the final answer. Why did I put it over there? Good stuff. Um, uh, Charlie in chat says the. Oh, uh, chat did tell me. Chat told me about five minutes ago, and I didn't notice. Who are you? Who are you? An anonymous person. <laughs> I didn't see. A chap did tell me that I can't add. Not essential for the question. I just did it as a throwaway comment. A throwaway comment that was wrong. We're wrapping up quite soon. <laughs> um, sorry to blow you. I believe the levels there are a little bit as well. Right, good. Um, for the one with the minus sign in, it's a different challenge. I would like to make xy really small in this case. Um, and I can make xy as small as zero. Um, if I go to the axes, um, that's where x, y is equal to 0. Yeah, so if I make x equal to 0, 
then hey, x, y, not a problem. That's zero now, uh, which is the, the least that you could be subtracting because we're in the positive, uh, we're in the first quadrant, x is positive, y is positive, so or zero or zero. So out there, x, y is positive or zero. So subtracting zero is kind of the best we can do. It's a bit weird. Um, this one is now the the uh, the point that ma the point that maximizes uh, that that function is now this point and this point. Uh, both of them same value on the axes. Uh, they're, they're the ones that you would go to. How did I get three? Um, I've got it. It's three, and that's the traditional website. Uh, people again challenging my ability to add numbers together. Um, I think I'm going to slightly, in some sense, give up on adding the numbers together. Um, what I believe is that x, y can only be as big as one half. The thing we're trying to maximize in that first case involves multiplying it by four and adding one. I am just struggling with four divided by two plus one. That's what I'm struggling with. I have a PhD in maths. And I cannot divide four by two. No, I've got the right answer. It is three. Oh, I get to keep my PhD. Great. Um, okay, uh, last bit. Um, and in the structure of a math question, you've got to respect it a little bit. Uh, we are now not asked to draw any curves. We probably should, but we're not asked to draw any curves. Um, and we're asked about the uh, smallest or largest value achieved at point in Q. It's a similar sort of idea, right? Um, okay, so I'm going to take a copy of this uh, picture, bring it back here. Um, because what I want to do is think about point in Q. And I want to think about this uh, circle, because let's say what it is. Um, that's a circle. Um, that equation there is equations of circles. Before we've had equations of straight lines and hyperbolas. Um, now we've got the equation of circles flying around. Um, so let me see. Um, I've got x. Let's try and complete the square or whatever it's called for a <laughs> complete two squares. What's it called for a circle? Um, okay, I need to add on. Oh my goodness, I need to add on the four and the one. That's my depth. There we go. Okay. So that's a circle that's centered on uh, 2 comma 1 and has radius k plus 5. So let's try and draw that, that for different values of k. So this is my uh, collection of circles. Oh, this is where I need that picture with infinitely many circles on it again, right? Uh, for different values of k. Um, and I think once you've drawn this picture, um, the radius is something to do with k. Um, and I want the smallest possible circle that has some points in q. Once you've had that idea, it turns into this kind of geometry question again. And this is something that math questions like to do, which is to have some help at the start, a bit less help in the middle, and then something which is maybe a similar idea, but different, slightly different. And we've now got a geometry question. If I put a circle centered at two, one, oh, that's one, the height there is one, uh, and two. Oh, zoom out a little bit, there we go. Uh, two over here, um, and, I make it so they just, uh, the circle just touches that one. So I need to draw a bigger circle. Begrudgingly, I need to make K slightly larger so that this circle just touches that one. And then what I'll get is the radio will perfectly align. Uh, they'll line up, lovely, just a point here. Uh, the radius at this point is at right angles to the tangent. The tangent is also the tangent of the other circle, so it's at right angles to the other one, so that's a straight line. That was the weirdest explanation of a straight line anybody's ever done. Uh, but hey, uh, both these radii are at right angles to the same thing, the, the mutual tangent. Um, okay, uh, which means that I've got some sort of tri uh, triangle going on here. Uh, this is radius 1, this one is radius something hideous like square root of k plus 5. Oh my goodness, the square root because that's r squared. Um, this is a geometry problem. It's not the geometry live stream today. Um, you can rearrange that for a value for k. Um, yep, yeah, circles, brilliant. Uh, what does the hypotenuse of the triangle help to determine the large value of x plus y? Oh, so the, oh, this is back a step, isn't it? This is back a few questions. Um, let's go back there in a second. Just want to talk about the circle briefly to wrap it up. Um, the circles both have a tangent. This one is x plus c. Ooh, um, you don't technically know the gradient of the tangent straight away in this one. And actually this one is a bit asymmetric because that circle is not on the line y equals x, it's, it's a bit off-center. So this one actually breaks the symmetry that we had before, the above, below, the line uh, symmetry is different. Uh, this is a 2-1 triangle, not a 1-1 one, one triangle like we had before. Up here, somebody asked me how knowing the hypotenuse was root 2 helps. Um, and it's true, I did do this very quickly and slightly uh, flippantly. Um, 
So the, the x-intercept here is an example of a point. If we've got um, x plus y equals c, where am I going to write this? I think over here. If we've got a line x plus y equals c, um, that's something I'd noticed but not said out loud when I was drawing the previous ones, is when c is a half, it goes through 1 half and 1 half. When c is 1, it goes through 1 and 1. And when c is 1.5, it goes through 1.5 and 1.5. Um, so the hypotenuse of the triangle there, that x-intercept, literally is the value of c. Um, it's because this is an example of a point that lies on the line. Um, so here are some examples of points that lie on the line. Um, examples of points x, y that add up to c. Um, that includes the intercepts. So if, you're, if your line is written like that, then it becomes a little bit easier to interpret what the value of c is. Um, it's something to do with the x-intercept and it's something to do with the y-intercept. Okay, cool. Um, We've got about five minutes at the end. If you'd like, any, like to ask any questions about what we've been doing, um, I'd like to keep this uh, useful for people. Um, if you want to ask me any sort of open day style questions, you can do that too. Um, at some point, I've got to go and get a train. And uh, I've been at this open day for quite a while. Oh, does that say minus? Does that say minus? Help, 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 I hope that doesn't say minus. Oh, that does say minus, doesn't it? Does the hint say minus? Sorry, it's really fuzzy on my screen as well. I'm for complicated reasons. I'm looking at a complicated preview of the thing. I believe the hint says the wrong number. Yep, hint says the wrong number. That's not a very good hint. <laughs> it's definitely a plus, right? Oh yeah, that's unforgivable. Welcome to the minus sign live stream, where we find minus signs in different places. Uh, I've got some extensions uh, talking about circles going on there and other graphs. I couldn't resist throwing a squircle at you. The squircle is something that's a bit like a square and a bit like a circle. Um, it's got a very nice equation with powers of four in it. Um, let's have a Slido chat on the screen, I think. Uh, let's do it like that. Ah, it's a little bit small. Uh, can we go... Um, let's go turn this off here. But turn it on there oh that's the wrong screen there we go has that worked no not at all now it has there we go ah oh, that's popular why not do a poll we've got five thumbs up it's very good is it possibly a ben's question okay good okay uh, let's get rid of uh no worries uh, uh, i can't actually read screen oh okay look at the screen no worries so now, uh, thanks for coming on to the live stream today um Great to have you. Uh, wondering if best in knowledge was the chance of you being accepted if you narrowly miss an A star in further maths? Roughly 50 50. And I know that's a really awful thing to say a couple of weeks before A level results day when people, uh, this matters for people. So, um, not guaranteed, not certainly no, but uh, somewhere in between. I've realised that full screen this. I haven't matched the colour scheme. I need to change this for next time. Um, tips for public speaking. It's very good at the open day. This is so weird to me because um, I don't I don't even think of myself as doing public speaking. I don't know. I mean, it's stupid because I just did an open day talk to about 300 people. Um, I started as a student ambassador um, talking about being a student. Um, I realised that most of the people I was talking to as a student ambassador, I would never see again. Um, they would maybe uh, apply to university, but, but because of the year difference, uh, by the time they said there, I've gone. Um, so I realized that lots of the people I was talking to I would never see again. Um, and I think that just made me more um, relaxed about what, what, I was, what I was doing, what I was saying. Um, I tried to listen to what other people were saying as well. Um, so that if you're in a in a group doing public speaking, you're, you're speaking, um, to try and imagine what it sounds like, uh, what, what the audience experience is, so that if somebody else has said something, um, that you can follow up in a way that, that makes sense. Uh, I don't really have public speaking tips. Um, nice question, thank you. Uh, AAC, uh, they're mocks, they're not real tests. I mean, they're, they're tests, but they're not real exams. Um, it depends what your predicted grades are, but even if uh, your predicted grades, um, you can still apply. Uh, works for improving over the summer. We always like it when people work, working and doing improving our prison. Yeah, okay. Um, these, these are exciting, exciting words. Um, Josh, uh, I'm not going to say no. Um, uh, I think it's possible. AAC is quite far away from A star A star A. Um, so there's some work. 
Uh, but it might just be that these are mocks. Um, I don't know if these are predicted grades. Bye, Harriet. Uh, <laughs> thank you for your question. Uh, remember, Harriet's question is to uh, find all of the solutions for questions one and two. Uh, OK, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Johnny, so people are currently worried about uh, missing grades. Uh, what does Johnny say? Question in three, so we'll just get C in my fourth subject. This is fine, Johnny. Uh, so, Johnny, uh, if you get an offer from Oxford, it's some uh, actually legally binding text. And if you get the standard text, the standard text is A star in maths, A star in further maths, A in any third subject. If you get that standard text, then legally speaking, it doesn't matter what you get in your fourth subject. Um, uh, so, uh, in terms of that, if you get that standard offer, then it just doesn't matter what you get. So, come results A, you are not worried about your fourth fourth A level. But that's not a reason not to try, right? You should still try. Uh, I got an offer myself that was one of these that was based on three A levels, and I was lucky enough to be studying four at, uh, at school. Um, and I got the offer, and I, I, I still tried. I still tried <laughs> in my other subject. Um, so, I think there's something about this. If you're doing four A levels, yeah. Does ever, Oxford ever specify, we have sometimes done this. I'm not sure there's much point in doing this. Um, generally, we've found that people doing 4A levels get A in both of the other ones, so it doesn't matter which one we specify for. Um, oh, question five. Oh, question five, okay, question about question. Quick look at a question. Whoosh, how do I find the question? Uh, oh, this is the logarithm one. How do you determine the graph to the left of the gas size in the log graph? Um, so we did that. We re we rearranged it in a different way. That was a sort of like there was an absolute value hiding in hiding inside there. But you could think about it as a, a different rearrangement that makes sense when x is less than one. Um, and to make sense, it's got to have a positive thing inside the logarithm. Okay. Uh, four A levels still apply. If one is done in year twelve. Oh, this is a follow up question. These are tricky. Um, yeah, okay. If you've done maths in year 12, we'll probably count the grades towards towards that. Uh, it would be normal for us to count the grade towards standard. Uh, year 12. Yeah, okay. Fine, good. Um, uh, bye. See you, see you around. Uh, I'm going to write this up, sorry. Um, I don't think I gave a reason. Um, we've changed provider, the administrators who do the math. Uh, it used to be one company. Now we're working with a different company. Um, and uh, I think I mentioned a security idea in passing that um, sending paper tests around the world is pretty tricky and also not that secure. Um, so uh, sending uh, questions appearing on a computer screen feels a little bit better. But in terms of maths, right? Still do maths questions even if you've seen them on a screen. Uh, Josh is going to do a mathsy investigation style project over the summer. Can you put it past name? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it doesn't. No, you definitely don't need to have done something original. Personal interest, yeah. Um, my personal statement has got, uh, had, it's in the past, my personal statement had some sort of weird investigation I did involving uh, dice and numbers on dice. Um, still possible. Um, so what's happening uh, when results day comes around, um, universities get uh, access to the grades as well. We get to see how they went. Um, and if we want to, we can still take somebody, even if they've missed the grades a bit. Um, we're allowed to do that. Good. Uh, step into bar. That's a good name for a thing. Uh, you, you can tell us about what you've been up to and make, remember to make it personal. Remember to tell us what you personally got out of it. Uh, how did you follow up? What did you personally do? Um, if you say, I went to a thing and they told me some maths and I took it in and I went home again, that's what are we going to do with that? How, how did this help you make it, make you a better maths student? Uh, you can, you can tell me about that. I think if you dig into what's going on in there as well. Uh, difference for changing another grammar. There's one difference that you now see the questions on the computer screen. We're talking about Matt. Uh, Matt here. Um, none of this affects uh, the maths. Uh, there's lots of things that you might be worried about, um, but uh, behind the mat is still a team here at Oxford writing maths questions um, and trying to give them to Oxford applicants and Imperial and Boric. Uh, there is a computer science question. Yep, so number six uh, survives. Question number six is still on the mat for applicants for. Computer science, computer science, of course, math and computer science. How much does personal statement matter? Um, I think the personal statement gives us really interesting information. Um, it's really that lots of people just tell us how much they like maths, and that's good, and they tell us they're interested in maths, and that's nice. Um, it's very hard to compare those between applicants for maths, um, uh, so we don't really do that. We don't give them scores in maths, we don't give them numbers in maths. 
um, as much as we love numbers. Um, but sometimes they've got important information in there to talk about other stuff that people are up to or, or other things that we should really know about uh, the context around their education. If you've had a different maths teacher every week, then there's not really a box to say that on the UCAS form, except the personal statement box, where you might say, I've had a different maths teacher each week, and uh, I'm amazing at maths anyway, or something. Um, can you speak about a level, oh, can you, can, uh, no, can they speak about A level content in your personal, oh my goodness. Uh, somehow my brain has got very tired and I can't read you to mean you. Can I speak about the A-level content? Yeah. Oh, in my personal statement, I did. If I did it ahead as part of a program, I didn't. Oh, but you did. Uh, you, you've you got a head. You can tell us about that. Yes, for sure. You can type anything in your personal statement. Um, uh, it's personal. You can, you can tell us about what you've done, personally. Yeah, there's no reason not to. I mean, so if it's relevant to how well you're going to do at university, then let us know. Cool. Uh, I can see that. There's a little view, viewer account on YouTube which tells me live. People are leaving. People are leaving. That's fine. Bye. If you're going to see you around, uh, we'll catch you next week for another episode. Um, next week, logarithms. Trailed earlier. I love a good logarithm. Um, finance really work experience. Um, you could go for it. Uh, if you're applying for maths and stats, I should say that we're doing joint admissions this time uh, going forwards. Joint admissions with maths. So we're going to consider all the maths and maths and stats people together. Um, that means you don't necessarily need to talk about stats in your application. You can if you like. Uh, you can talk about finance things. You can talk about um, what you're interested in, what your motivation is for studying maths if, if you want to. Um, but nobody is saying you have to. If you self-study the modules, I, I think if you self-study, self-study is... Um, are really hard. Um, so you're showing that you've got some independent study skills, which you'll need at university, so that's good. Um, is that a failure decision? Uh, in terms of, if you get an A-star through self-study, then an A-star is an A-star, right? You get the grades. It doesn't really matter how you learnt it, as, as far as, uh, as, far as I'm, you know, it matters obviously in your life and your experience of what's going on there. But um, in terms of us, if you get the grades, you get the grades, which is all good. Right, a couple more, and then I think I'm gonna hang up. Uh, Yep, and I'm gonna let everyone go. Uh, people in different time zones. Yeah. It's a whole different experience. God, that, that blue really cl clashes with the pink, doesn't it? It matches in the corner. Uh, so the color scheme is what I'm currently worried about. Yeah. Josh says school won't have done stats until after the map. That's all right, um, because, uh, no, that's fine, right? Because uh, there's no stats on the maps, so you're okay. There's a little bit of Probability that we spoke about a couple of weeks ago. Could I explain the log law that a to the power of log b equals b to the power of log a? I think I might do that next week <laughs> on the logarithm episode. Um, as always, if the questions are too hard, blame chat. Chat's setting hard, chat is setting harder questions than me right now. now earlier I had to apologise for math questions, and, and now chat is coming at me with questions like that. I mean, this is maybe revenge. Um, so my guess is that you should take the logarithm of both sides when you compare these things. So you a to the power of log. You haven't put a base on your logarithm, but I don't think it's going to matter. Um, I should take the logarithm of both sides, and then on the left, bring down the power. That's what you can do with logarithms. You'll get log b, log a. On the right, bring down the power. You get log a, log b. So these things have got the same logarithm. Looks a one-to-one function. I think we're good. Uh, right, okay, I think I'm going to wrap up at this point. If, you've if you're currently typing your question, then because of stream delay, I've already answered it. That doesn't make any sense at all. Right. <laughs> it's not true, is it? If you're currently typing your question, I haven't read it yet. Uh, I'm very tired and confused. Uh, I'm going to hang up there. Uh, thank you very much for watching. We're going to be next time for some logarithms. If you're at the open day, then uh, have fun. Top tip for the summer. It's made it into the stream. You made it onto the onto the screen. I was about to hit the button. I was about to push it push it away. But top tip for summer, you got in the you got in the show, um, and so did you. Um, <laughs> top tip for summer: try to relax, have a have a break from school, but try to not get rusty with mathematics. Try to do something so that you're not um, you're not uh, out of gear or car metaphors today. Apparently, um, so that you're ready to start 
uh, next year after the summer. That doesn't have to be you lock yourself in uh, a room and do maths and nothing else, but um, it might be a good idea to regularly schedule some sort of check-in, some sort of revision, um, some sort of structured program where maybe once a week for a couple of hours, uh, you just do some sort of uh, revision exercises, maybe push yourself a little bit with some harder problems. Uh, if, you, if you're interested in math, you might do some of that as well. Um, I, have, I don't know where you're going to find um, a weekly thing of two hours of revision and math problems, but uh, uh, if you find it, then uh, uh, let me know. That sounds like a, a really good uh, live stream. Because um, somebody else asks about the live stream. Can we put it on the UCAS application? Yeah, sure. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, and I've remembered now that you've seen the big section of the UCAS thing about widening participation or extra preparation for higher education. Um, the provider is the University of Oxford. The name of the show is Oxford Matt Livestream. Um, I don't know if that you have to do a drop down list or something for this. Um, you can list it if you want to, uh, because I think you can put anything in the box. Uh, I haven't registered this with UCAS. If this is the problem, uh, if it turns out that you can't select it from a drop down list, then that's because I haven't told UCAS about this. I should tell UCAS about this. Then it might appear in drop down lists. People who are applying would say, what's this? Why have I just heard about it? And then they'd be sad because they'd only just be seeing it on their UCAS application. Maybe I should not tell UCAS about this. Um, I don't know what the ETC is because I haven't seen this bit of the UCAS form. I suspect that they've added it uh, quite recently for this sort of list of things like that. If you're on the stream still, you could maybe let me know in chat what other stuff uh, you need to know about the live stream. Hopefully for the obvious things. I'm doing maths with Oxford. Is that one of the boxes? Maths. Next box. Oxford. Weekly. Here's the website. Maybe you can tell UCAS. Yeah. Okay. Let's leave that as a homework exercise. Um, cool. Okay. All the best with preparing for your UCAS applications and enjoy your summer. Why am I saying enjoy your summer? I'm going to see you next week. See you next week for logarithms. Bye.